we have a, a little bit more of a range. We had 10 points separating them to begin with. And it we'll looks like we're at about uh, 16 points from top to bottom. Yeah, Kevin Beach flopped over uh, Rob Morgan to take the number four spot. Well, you, you know, Rob started out with a 423. The good thing is I'm trying to find the positive thing in shooting a five. Yeah. Now his number is even, so no one knows he shot a five. That's well, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, always look for that sunshine, yeah, right, right, Nathan? That's Come right. On. I mean, if you've got nothing else to say <laughs> about it, like, hey, nobody yeah. knows I shot a five, man, <laughs> except it was on video. Well, yeah, dude. <laughs> but look, I can tell you right now, there's only four other people out here that's not wishing they were in Rob's shoes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Because he's out there getting to shoot where everybody else is watching. Looks like Rob's just ticking a little bit low. That could be his numbers. That could be dipping. It is gusty, breezy. We're right here on the bank. I mean, the Chattahoochee River. If you go over the fence behind these targets, you're falling in the river. Yeah, and it is windy. Um, you know, we're we're shielded. The wind is actually hitting us right at our back. Yeah. And we have this uh, tent, basically, that's covering us. So there's a 10. That's Kevin Beach. So that's going to move him to 442. All right, let's get this score here, and then we got some information for you. That's a 10 for Randy Morocco, moves him to 454. So, folks at home there, you're just joining us here. That broadcast for us was in an accident. So, it just got here, and now the broadcast has picked up. We have been recording, so you will be able to see Women's Known Pro and the beginning of this shoot down. You will be able to see it, you know, later tonight and certainly after tomorrow. You'll be able to watch the full video. But we're just coming up now. You're joining us live. We appreciate it. And that's the explanation of why you're coming in and they're already shooting. Stacy Yoke there hit a 12 on that um, that black buck. We're moving on to Tim Gillingham there with a 10 on the antelope. It moves him to 446. And for Rob Morgan, currently sitting at 428 with 19 bonus rings. Yeah, we had to start promptly at 4 p.m., but like I said, accidents do happen. That's Nathan. right. This is live TV, so That's it waits for no one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Good shot there by Rob. Yeah, that was a, you know, there's a connector line there, uh, and it, you know, it looks funny, like, oh, it's out there, but that connector line, it does make things a little bit bigger. All you got to do is touch that line. Yeah, what a lot of people don't understand about the way 3D archery is scored, yes, they're rings, but they're not perfect circle rings. Uh, you'd say, well, well, that's not what I see but you have to understand the actual scoring behind it. The 12s actually have a, what we call a 90 degree rule that where it touches the 10 line, you would, tip, you would typically have a perfect circle, but where it touches the 10 line, it actually drops down and creates like this, in engineering terms, it's a boss basically. Yeah. That comes off of the, the circle. Um, so, sometimes it's a little bit confusing for people when they see it. And the targets are foam. It's pliable. They can stretch it out. All that arrow has to do is touch anywhere. And what these judges are doing, they've told us, is that, boy, there's got to be clear for them not to give them the points because you don't want to take anything away from them. Right, absolutely. I mean, and, and the point of that is, you know, some people will say, well, it's got to be touching the line. That's exactly right. But th this is not, um, this is, you're in until you're proven out. Right. It's not a oh, wow. That definitely is in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no question. It's a big arrow, too, right in the <laughs> middle of that 12 ring. Yeah. There's a good look at Rob Morgan on that boar. He smoked that lower 12. It sure looks like he did. Yeah. That's a, yeah. know, that he is a it. dark He's target to see, to be able to hit the 12 ring. Here we so, so another thing, uh, just a, a point to bring up here is a nice 12 on that. Yeah, another point to bring up is how how hard it is to actually see these rings. Uh, most yeah. of these guys don't know, they can't see the ring. They're just right. aiming in the area where they 
think it's at. Now, some of them have a big enough power in their lenses to be able to see them sometimes if the sun is right. But for the most part, it's referencing something that you see on the target, maybe a, a light or a dark spot, and you're aiming off of that spot to right, execute your shot. So that was an eight for Kevin Beach on that last target. Now we're back to our leader, Randy Morocco, on the black book. He takes a 10. 464. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point, Nathan. And we don't like to pick on the old guys, but hey, senior class is 50 and over. And let's face it, you know, when you get to that age, you don't see too good. I can promise you that. I am in that class. Not in that class. I'm in that age class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in their class. <laughs> well, we see it sometimes. Even on camera, you'll see a guy take his binoculars and he'll turn it around backwards, and he's looking at his sight yeah. tape. I do that. Yeah. Guilty. So if anyone's <laughs> ever had a pair of binoculars and you turn them around backwards, you know it Whoa. is like a magnifying glass if you get up real close. So. Yes. Perfect 12 there for the hammer. Tim Gillingham. 458. So this kind of, um, these conditions are what Gillingham uh, just really, really shines in, which any archer he does well. But this type of yep. windy situation where he shoots on command, triggers his, his release. He's not waiting on the shot to, as we say, break to go off. Right. He, there he you controls go. it. Yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we got to look at the turn, at the reverse there. Right. <laughs> but yes, Tim. I mean, he's from Utah. It's the wind's blowing there mm -hmm. every day, pretty much. Yeah. So he he's extremely good in these situations. Not that the other guys aren't either, but we've just right. seen him have a lot of success. Matter of fact, I've heard him tell me, "I hope the wind blows like crazy." <laughs> so. <laughs> And we'll start your yes. Now. Would wish that on other people. Tim Gillingham, one of the hardest working folks in archery. So Randy is actually shooting a, a thumb button release. Yep. I don't know that he actually commands it, and I don't know that he squeezes it. By the looks of that shot, it looks like he, he is a squeezer yeah. because it kind of gave him a surprise when it fired. And uh, that would be... I mean, that's what an archer would look like when they fire it if, if they're squeezing right. it, as opposed to someone that triggers the release. Look at Tim. Uh, the reactions by Tim Gillingham are always awesome. You, used to, you usually don't even have to look at the target to know where his arrow's at. Yeah. I'm guessing he called upper there because yeah. they gave him a 10 on that. 468. So we're going to move on to... Oh, that was the first target, so. Rob Morgan takes an eight uh, on that deer, which is 27 yards. Looks like he was trying for that 14. Yeah, that's a good one to go for. I mean, unfortunately, the wind was really cool. blowing hard when they shot that shot. Yes. All right, <coughs> next up, Kevin Beach. That's close. But he took a big old gust there, too. Ten. Ten. There was a good look at, I mean, that was clearly all the way outside the line, but it was touching, mm -hmm. and that's all it needs to do. Right. Yeah, these, these guys, you know, the luck of the draw is, is a big, I hate to say it, but it is a big part in this uh, because, you know, like uh, Rob drew the shortest target with the wind howling. Yeah. Whereas another guy might actually draw that target in the wind not be howling. Yeah. So you have, you know, it, it is a little bit of luck of the draw, um, but that's the game we play. We all know that. All right, Nathan, so there is a 10 for Stacy Yoke, and I got to say this, Stacy Yoke for a living, I, will, I don't think I will ever say this in an archery competition again, he tunes classical pianos. <laughs> That's his job. That's awesome. And he, I wanted to go through a list of names, and he's like, you name them. If they play a piano, he's tuned it for them. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet in archery out here, but I thought that was great. Billy Joel, maybe. Billy Joel. He mentioned Elton John. We went down through this. Bruce Hornsby. He just mentioned all kinds of folks. And 
mainly classical pianos, he said, but he has done some more well-known names. Interesting. But just, you never know who you're going to meet in archery. All right, so let's run down here. We got 474, Randy Morocco in the lead. Stacy Yoke, 470 in second. Tim Gillingham, 468. And then we've got a tie between Rob Morgan and Kevin Beach at 460. So looking, looking at these Randy. scores, I got a good feeling we're going to go to a sixth and final arrow. Because this, sure looks looks like. this is target number five. Yes. Wind's picking up again. Look at the trees in the background there. That's Rob's son, Tate, holding the umbrella for him right there. He went for that 14. Oh, I think he's just low. So close. Randy's kind of waiting out that wind. They have a minute, we should say. There is a shot clock out there, so he he can take every bit of that minute to shoot. But he's pushing it down. I, oh, that did not take long boy, no, he, when that he, one got there. Yeah. I'm going to guess he called upper. If he didn't, Randy he's wishing Morocco. he had. He's it. wishing he had. <laughs> I'm going to guess that he did. But first up on the boar. Kevin. No, no, sorry, Stacy. Stacy Oak gets a 10 there. 480. Next up, Tim Gillingham. He was shaking his head, so I don't yeah, know if he got this he one or not. He did go for the 14. Ooh, that's close. It pulling high. He's got a big, heavy arrow that's going to pull as much as possible. No, nope, that's an 8 for Tim Gillingham. Just low. He knew he was going to try for it, though. Absolutely. Tim, if he's not first, if he ain't first, you're last. That's Tim <laughs> Gillingham. <laughs> All right, Rob Morgan eight. next. Eight. 468. So, got to see what Randy did here, but everybody. No, we are going to drop some archers here. I think we're going to drop Man. Rob and Kevin for that six eight. arrow. There's an eight, eight. Kevin. So, Rob. Yeah. Rob and Kevin are both going to finish at 468. Looks like Rob's going to have the benefit of the 12 count. Okay. So he'll finish fourth. Gotcha. And looks like Randy, Stacy, and Tim will go on to one final arrow. Yes, thanks for explaining that, Nathan. So the bonus rings is what separates ties. So the thing about that was, <coughs> said earlier that Rob had those had the five had the odd number, and then he shot another five that made it back even again. So obviously, if he shot two fives on the weekend, he had a, a lot of twelves right. to be able to make it into this shoot off. So, yeah. so he will take fourth, and Kevin Beach take fifth. Congratulations to those both of those guys. This was both of their first time in the shoot down. Again, this senior known pro, again, is the, a new class for the ASA this year. This is only the second tournament. Um, so both of those men were in their first shoot down. Congratulations to them. Yeah, Kevin from uh, Montana, in, or I'm sorry, I said Montana, Kentucky. And uh, there are a lot of great shooters in Kentucky. And I think a lot of that has to do with, I mean, obviously he's in the senior division, but a lot of it has to do with a NAS program. Right. Because the National Archery in the Schools program. That started in Kentucky, and yeah. it's been going on for a long time. And basically what that involves is uh, the schools are introducing children to archery. And we are seeing a, a very big influx of of archers coming from the state of Kentucky, and I know Huge. that's the reason why. All right, so our field is set here now for our sixth arrow. It looks like they're going to shoot at the black buck. Uh, and our director of judges, Scott Parrott, has moved him up in front of the line. We don't know the distance. They do. They can use their range finders. But he just changed the pos shooting position a little bit, give him something a little different to look at. Oh, no, I see the turkey out there. That is the last chance archery, last chance arrow. So they are shooting at that turkey there. I missed that. 
And it's in the dark. That's why I missed it. Look at those shadows. <laughs> right. So it, it's, it is brighter um, than what it looks like to us. Yes. But it's still pretty dark. Judging from the side distance here, it doesn't look like a really long shot. So I, I mean, I expect him to shoot it to 14 here regardless. Sure. He's got third place wrapped up. So he's going to shoot it to 14 and at least try and make Stacy work for second. Um, but it's really difficult to see that up there, let alone aim in this wind. It's, oh. It's a pretty rare letdown for Yeah. Him. For Tim. Boy, if, if he'd have held on to it, the wind was down while he was drawn. And now it's picked back up again. But he's got Kyle Douglas sitting there using that umbrella to block some of it. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he's got some sort of USB cord plugged in there for phone reception, too. <laughs> if you notice, he's got <laughs> quite a few bars coming off there. I wonder if he has the baseball game, if he can get that. <laughs> Looky there. Oh, 14. there he goes. That's why Tim Gillingham is Tim Gillingham. That's right. <laughs> and, and we can laugh about the bars all, all we want. All we you know want. What? We're sitting over here, and he's out he's there. He's out there. <laughs> That's going to take him to 490. Such a good archer. He's fun to watch. We, oh we have gosh. fun joking around with Tim, but, I mean, this man lives archery lives it and he'll talk to anybody about it just so generous with his time and he can back it up absolutely he, <laughs> he he's a good sport about things too i, I may have uh, i may know someone who wrote a song <laughs> kind of a little parody song <laughs> about right. him once upon a time uh, yes check out competition archer media's youtube if you want to hear the song about tim gillingham by our own nathan brooks <laughs> He's such a good guy. All right, Stacy Yoke up now. Now he needs a 10 at least to tie Tim. Bonus ring would help. He did he call? He called up or he did call up her. All right. He got it. Got it. Yep, there you go. Come by the Elite trailer a little earlier today and we were talking about wow. him in that bow and he said he just has uh, such a good feeling with that bow. He says it's so easy for him to shoot. Yeah. It's just uh, one of those things like what we was talking about earlier with, with uh, the transition that Madison made over to Dart and was shooting the bow and how well she just kind of seamlessly moved into it. And he yeah. said the same thing about that one. Just That's the elite verdict. Yes. Shoot. Yeah. New target bow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's the man, Randy Morocco. Basically, he, well, he at least needs an eight. A five won't help him. I don't know if that's a 36 or a 40. I think that's a TRX 40. Yeah, I think it's the 40 he shoots at. Great shot. There you go. Smoke. Now, he did not call the upper. He didn't all, need But two. all he needed was a 10. Just needed a 10. So that's going to be a 4. That'll do it. Six. So... Randy Morocco is going to take the title, second in a row for him. Stacy Yoke, 492, and Tim Gillingham at 490 is going to be our podium. So Randy's going to come over here. We'll get a quick word for him. And Randy Morocco is definitely. One of the nice guys in archery. They're all, they're all good guys. But there's a, there's a lot of good ones. But, yes, Randy is uh, top notch for sure. So there he goes. He's got the headset on there. Randy Morocco, two in a row. How does that feel? It's amazing. It's um, beyond belief. But at the same time, you know, you work really, really hard. You keep on fighting. This weekend was very, very difficult. It was a long course. It was a tough course. There were times where... I thought I was going to be out of it, but you just have to keep on fighting. You have to keep on shooting. You have to keep on uh, believing that you're going to catch up. And eventually I did today. And uh, I have, you know, made the best of this course here, uh, shot a few 12s and even with the wind. And it, w it just felt really, really great. So, and it's just blessed to have three wins in a row here and indoor nationals and Foley and 
Um, what can I say? It's just, uh, it's, it's marvelous. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations, Randy. I noticed uh, we were watching you shoot and just wondering real quickly with uh, this wind the way it is, are you trying to command that shot? Are you trying to squeeze that shot? How are you getting that shot to go? Uh, <laughs> on the Wolverine, <laughs> I kind of closed my eyes and punched it and, <laughs> you know, really just looked down and it was right in the 12. And, you know, usually with the wind, I'll just try to pull through it just like normal. Um, but sometimes the gust comes and you're running out of time. You've got to, you got to get that arrow moving. Well, it worked really, really good. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Appreciate it, Randy. Thank you. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We will be back here at Fort Benning, Georgia. Next up, we're going to have Women's Pro. Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. Vinny LaSelva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. With thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com. Shootdown, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's <laughs> Mr. McCarthy. Yeah. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. 
I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. Military aircraft of all shapes and sizes from Fort Benning constantly flying overhead. Archers competing in the ASA Pro class has spent two days in the pines at Uchi Creek chasing elusive 12 ring. But now it's time to head to the thinly wooded bank of the Chattahoochee River where the Spanish moss lets everyone know which way the wind is blowing for the pro pressure point shoot downs. Who's got what it takes to handle the pressure and shoot through nerves to climb the ASA podium? Let's find out right now. Welcome everybody to the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am here at Fort Benning, Georgia. We welcome everybody coming in. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna kick off the day with our women's pro division and Nathan Brooks, tell us what we're looking at here. So we've got a pretty big point spread here from top to bottom of 15 points with Cara Kelly leading the pack at 413. She's always right there at the top. They can never count her out. Great shooter. Great yardage judger. She's fantastic, which is why she's at the top. And then Sharon Wallace at a 403, who's also right there all the time. Emily McCarthy at 402. Lindsey Christensen snuck in there at 398, who is from the West. So we don't see a lot of the gals from out West come in and do the ASA very often, but she did extremely well. And then Aaron McGlady rounds it out at a 398 as well. All right, Nathan, there you see the 2023 Delta McKenzie ASA Tour. We've been to Foley. We're in Russell County. That's where we are now. Technically, uh, we're going to be at the Easton Hoyt Pro-Am Camp Minden, Louisiana next month. 
Then we head to London, Kentucky in June, Metropolis in July. We're going to finish up with the McKenzie Classic in Coleman, Alabama, August 5th. So welcome everybody to the Competition Archery Media broadcast. As we mentioned, second stop on the ASA Tour. I'm your host, PJ Riley, sitting next to Elite Pro Nathan Brooks. And Nathan, weather's beautiful. It's a little windy right now, but we have been enjoying this weekend out here. Yeah, it's a little gusty, but this place is fantastic. Um, the you know, spring is in the air here. <laughs> As a matter of fact, last year here, I had such a an unbelievable um, allergy attack that I couldn't even do the commentating for us. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, so it was really bad. But this weekend is gorgeous. I'm not battling that, and that is fantastic. So I'm definitely happy about that. And uh, these guys, they're battling a little bit of wind out here, but I'm certain they're happier than it, than it is rain because yes. that's what they were battling a little earlier today. Absolutely. So we want to let everyone at home know about the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am. So we're going to bring in ASA President Josh Grind. He's going to tell us all about it. We're in the second stop of the Delta McKenzie ASA Pro-Am Tour. We are at the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am in Uchi Creek, which is located in Russell County, Alabama. Uh, if you've if heard it referred to as the bedding chute, that's also correct. Well, so far for registration, you know, we're still early. We've got a lot of walk up. We're at just shy of 1,300 people, which is an increase of about 150 over last year already. So we, with the walk up registration coming, we are, have had to add two new ranges here. So our team has been, you can see some of the terrain here. They've done some, uh, I was told it's first cutting, not clear cutting. So they've done some timbering here. They also came through and did a controlled burn. Uh, so that we've been here since uh, about the first week in October to uh, clean things up, get the ranges ready. And we did add with an expectation of growth, two new ranges that are located a little further up the road that we'll have shooters on this week. Man, that, that target down there is kind of like beef stew. It's got a little bit of everything in it. <laughs> yeah, as I said, we with the, the timbering and the, the burning and all the stuff that needed to take place, we've been sending ASA crews since the beginning of October, but Russell County has also been sending volunteers over. So every time that, that the ASA crew would come in here and clean lanes and get this place ready, Russell County volunteers were also coming over and helping us. So the community support here is incredible. Being on the military base, we've got a lot of opportunities to interact with them and, and they come out. And whether it's curiosity, they want to see what we're doing or they want to come out and lend a hand, the support here is really great. Yeah, with almost 1,300 people registered for this event already, we hope to hit that 1,500 mark, which is a really big increase from here. You have Foley, where we, we were over 2,000 shooters. Uh, kids are back in school, they're not on those winter breaks, so we tend to see a little bit of a dip in this one. We see strong numbers, and that's across the board. Yeah, the, the terrain here is it, much denser than we see in Foley, the first stop on the tour. Uh, and it, typically there's more undergrowth, but with the controlled burn they came through, but we still have a lot of pines, a lot of oaks. So we're able to do some things with targets here that we're not able to do in Foley that's, that's a little more open. So that'll impact the shooters. The, the lanes will be a little darker, a little tighter. Uh, you know, they might not see those 12 rings easy as they did a month ago in Foley. Good job, bro. Uh, and there's just an excitement, you know, that. There's, there's, there's an opportunity for everybody here, whether you like the unknown game and you like judging and, and, and that reward of, I mean, I've, we've talked to several people and like, there's nothing better than judging a target properly and then shooting a 12 and that execution. And so if you love that game, we, we've got super strong classes there. The addition of the known classes on the pro side gives the people that are growing up shooting known an opportunity to participate. And that's what we want. We want everybody to be able to come out, have a great time on the ASA Pro-Am Tour. So Friday and Saturday morning, our pro classes, they're competing for the, the opportunity to take to participate in the big show, which is the Pro Pressure Point Shoot Down. Long hole. Oh, we got it. Smoked it. <laughs> And that shoot down this year is gonna take place where it did last year, down along the Chattahoochee River, which separates Georgia and Alabama. Beautiful setting down there. We've got the Spanish moss hanging down. You can see the Chattahoochee in the background. So more opportunities, more shooters, and that's what we want.
All right, there is that field that we're looking at here on the banks of the Chattahoochee as our archers are judging their distance for the first class there. There are five targets spread out on this range here. They're going to shoot across, you know, five hours. There's our first target is going to be the boar. These are unknown distance, so we don't know the distance there, but that is target number one is the wild boar. Target number two, we have the feeding doe. That is our second target out there. And moving on to target three, that is the black buck. Uniquely colored target there. That's our farthest target, the antelope. We don't know the distance, but that's we know that's the farthest is the antelope. And finally, we're coming around to the pesky little wolverine for target number five. If you're not familiar with ASA scoring, you can see that there are different rings out there. Anywhere on the body outside all rings is, is worth five points. You see the largest ring. Anything inside that but outside all the others is worth eight points. Then you're going to see a, a big circle in the middle with three smaller circles in it. That's going to be our 10-point ring. The three smaller circles, only the top and bottom ones, they're going to be worth 12 points. If you want that upper one, you have to call it. And then up uh, to the top right of those, you're going to see a ring out there in that eight-point ring. That's the 14. That's the high-risk reward there. Um, so, Nathan Brooks, we are excited to see these archers shooting at these targets. But first, we got to take a little business. We're going to step away for a second. Don't go anywhere. We're coming right back here to Fort Benning for senior or for the women's pro shoot down. Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's just a lot. in the women's shoot down. Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier. Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier. Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy.
Unbelievable. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot for Carl. Yeah. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improven. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. Lighting's been interesting with the sun coming up, it's warming up, um, so you see us using a lot of umbrellas. Ooh, way high. All right, Nathan, uh, we got to look at some of the action there from these ladies in the woods. Uh, let's run through those standings one more time. What are we looking at? So 15 point spread top to bottom. Car Kelly in the, in the lead at 413. Sharon Wallace at 403. Emily McCarthy at 402. That's really where the battle's going to be is for second place unless something bad happens in this wind. And then we got Lindsey Christensen and Aaron McGlattery at 398. So going to be a little bit of work to get to that top podium uh, position to uh, dethrone Cara, but uh, there's it can be done. In these windy conditions, it can definitely be done. All right, let's get to the action, bring these archers out. We're going to go to the third member of our team. Oh, we're going to go to a recap first. So, yes, we were in Foley last month. Let's take a look at how things went down there at our last tournament. Crazy girl. She eight, points. eight points. That's, That's all you needed. <laughs> That's all she needs. Sharon Wallace came into the women's pro finals with a healthy lead, but some stellar shooting from her competition whittled that down ahead of the six arrow. Yep. Boom. She needed that. She needed that. Wallace did what she needed to do, though, and held on for her first win of the season a day after her 50th birthday. Does Sharon Wallace still have it? Yes, she does. Like I said, I've had a really rough off season. A lot of stuff's happened. So to be able to come in here and just keep it together and be able to win the first one, I, I just, I have so many emotions going through me right now. I, I don't even know what to say right now. All right, Nathan, now we're going to get to the action here. We want to go to the third member of our team, Steven Altizer. He's going to bring out the women's pro competitors. All right, guys, got me? Next up is your women's pro. Fifth place from Marsden, Saskatchewan. Shooting for Hoyt with a 398, Aaron McGlattery. Yeah. Fourth place from Weston, Idaho. Shooting for Prime, Lindsey Christensen. In third place from Wazika, Wisconsin, shooting for Matthews, Miss Emily McCarthy with a 402. Second place, Townsville, South Carolina, Jack Wallace's wife, Sharon Wallace with a 403. Shooting for PSC. First place with a 413 from Lapeer, Michigan, Miss Cara Kelly shooting for Matthews. All right, ladies. All right, Nathan. 
So, as we showed there, you know, Cara Kelly, she just came in here, executed a plan, and she has a commanding lead. Doesn't mean it's a gimme, but uh, the other ladies are going to have some work to do if they want to chip away at that. And as you mentioned, there is a battle for second place. Uh, uh, you know, absolutely. And the, the thing about this is with the wind at play, typically the, the women have lighter arrows. Yeah. And, and, and when I say lighter arrows, I mean lighter than what we see with the men's. Right. And so they have more drift they have to overcome. Um, most of them are shooting a little less poundage. The bows are a little bit lighter. Yes. So all those things are harder for them to have to deal with in these situations. So um, good look there at Aaron. She's shooting a Hoyt. Looks like she's got quite a bit of weight on the bow, but, you know, Aaron is also typically shooting quite a bit of poundage, and she's shooting the biggest arrows of any of these ladies out here. That's a 25-diameter yep. shaft. Aaron McGlattery from Marsden, Saskatchewan. You have to look that up to find it because it is in the middle of nowhere. Emily McCarthy there shooting that black buck. Yeah, Nathan, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the weight of the arrows, et cetera. They're also shooting, they have a lower speed restriction. 280 feet per second is their maximum that they're allowed, plus shorter draw lengths. Everything just makes for slower arrow speeds. First up, we have a 10 there for our leader, Cara Kelly. Yeah, and, and it does with, with, the, with judging distance. You know, so the difference in 280 feet per second, 295 feet per second, yeah. um, that's actually more than what most people would think, especially when you get out at the longer distances. When you're missing a yard, it turns into more than an inch. It could be two inches. So that's a nice looking shot there on the, a long, long deer. Yeah, we got Scott Parrott there taking a good look. So Nathan, while we're doing that, let's get this arrow call first. We got a 12 we are calling there. Um, so, yes, Nathan, let's get to the big question. These ladies don't know how far these targets are. If you were watching us earlier, they were known distance. This is unknown distance, which means they must step up there and judge how far these targets are. Yeah, and for a lot of us, it's guess. Um, <laughs> but but I'm telling you, these, these gals here, they're great yardage judges. They've looked at these targets a lot. They understand depth. Um, a lot of people will ask that question, how do you judge distance? Well, if you've played any kind of sports before, if you've ever thrown a football, you've ever thrown a baseball, you have to learn how far to throw something. Right. There's a depth there. And it's the same thing with archery. Uh, when you're judging distance, you have to learn that depth. And these girls have learned it really well. There's a great 12 from Lindsey Christensen. She did call the upper on that one. She's from Idaho. She works uh, in Alaska, uh, goes back and forth all yeah. the time. Um, a director of nursing, actually, she I believe, is something like that. Yes. She also was part of um, the ultimate bow hunter or ultimate hunter. Uh, yes. I, 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 She's I, a world traveler for yeah. hunting. She hunts all over the place. That's a 12 there for Aaron McLattery as well. These ladies are starting off hot. Yeah. So, we're going to get our scores here. Carr Kelly, 423. Sharon Walls, 415. Emily McCarthy, Lindsey Christensen, Aaron McLattery all at 410. Just like that, we have a three-way tie for third. Yeah, we knew this was going to get hot uh, for the second and third place race. And yep, just like you said, there it is. <laughs> so that judging distance like you were talking about, Nathan, that's a great explanation that, hey, how do you know how far to throw that football to hit the receiver? Years of experience, and you're just naturally going to get good at it. Not let alone, you know, practicing over and over. You figure out, you know, how a third far baseman, are. a third baseman can tell you how hard he needs to throw a ball to get the first, right. because that's his throw that he's having to make a lot. Uh, shortstop can tell you how hard to throw it to first base, and so that's just—it's a learned thing. But so is judging distance. You, yeah. You've got to spend time doing it. Um, in hunting situations, it is invaluable. Um, you know, people. You talk about they always have the range finders with them, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of times I forget stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just a little left there on that antelope for uh, 
That was Emily. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I believe that was Emily. Uh, now we got Sharon Wallace, who won our last one. Boom, smoked that 12. So the, the wind here, for the most part, PJ, from what I see, is coming from right to left. Yeah. And so if you notice these archers shooting a little left, that's that's, that's a lot right. of it right there. It's a little miscalculation in how much wind drift is out there. So that's Erin McLattery on the board. She takes a 10, moves her to 420. Then we'll come back around to our leader, Cara Kelly. Cara has been at this for a long time since she was a teenager. Yes. Yep. And that's something we see with a lot of the, the top level shooters yeah. that judge distance. They've been doing this since they were knee high to a grasshopper, as my dad says. <laughs> Sharon Wallace, as we saw in the replay, that she enjoyed her 50th birthday in Foley, so she's out there still hitting these 12s doing what she needs to do to climb that ladder. Sharon Wallace, if she's in the mix, she's going to fight. Well, that's, that's two in a row. Two in a row, yep. Moves her to 427. Now, all of a sudden, she's within five points. Yeah. And six, excuse me. And like we said, I mean, uh, anything can happen out here in this wind. Anything can happen with the gust. They can make yeah. a good shot, and the gust can take the arrow. It doesn't take much on a Wolverine. I certainly don't want to wish negative on anybody, but Cara Kelly actually was in a shoot down a couple of years ago in Metropolis where the wind I cost her to miss one. She was the leader and ended up not winning that tournament. So we don't want to put that bad mojo on her. It's not that windy. That day no, no. was crazy windy. Yeah, that was insane. In insane. All right. So, Nathan, what are we looking at now? So, if my scoring is correct here, I got 433 for Cara, still in the lead. Five points behind is Sharon Wallace. Emily is nine points behind Sharon, but um, Aaron McLattery has stepped into a oh, yeah. third place position at a 420. So, a little change there. And like we said, this was that's where the battle was going to be. Right. All right. Good for Aaron, fighting her way up there. Shot at Lindsey Christensen. Look at the weight on that back bar. You can count that real quick. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen ounces on the back bar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. And now that's the number one target, which is Lindsay. Uh, so she's Black just hole. right of that board. And my guess, that's probably right where she was holding. Yeah. When and she's probably stopped. expecting a little bit of drift. And it just stops, like you just said. It just stopped out here, yeah. and you don't, you don't know. And you're trying to guess that, and you're trying to guess the distance, and you're trying to make a good shot. And there's so many little factors there's that go into it. <laughs> there's a lot going on out there. Yeah, you've been out there, Nathan. I mean, it's. I don't know how you guys think when you're out there. And honestly, the very first time you're out there, it goes so fast. You blink your eyes, and it's over. It's over. Yeah, and you. You oftentimes think, man, what did I do there? I don't remember, but look at there. <laughs> same exact thing. Just to the right of that upper 12. She was calling the yep. upper 12. Probably aimed right there, and that's right where the arrow landed. Yeah, it's, it is remarkably calm now from what it was just 10 minutes ago. And, and it's going to keep gusting and getting calm, gust, get calm. It's just going to do that off and on all afternoon. It's an eight for Sharon, so. Kind of unusual there. Yeah, that is our longest target, as we mentioned. It's going to move her to a 435. That's Emily there with a 10. Says she's going to go to 428. All right. We didn't change positions there. Car Kelly did extend her lead a little bit now. 443, 435. Sharon Wallace and Aaron McLattery at 430. Emily and Lindsay Christensen at 428. Something else these, these uh, archers are fighting out there that you can't really tell unless we see the field to play over and over, especially when the wind's blowing. It ain't just the wind. It's also the shadows dancing on that target because right. they can't see those rings. 
the majority of the time they can't see those rings unless the sun is shining on the target just right or whatever but they can't see the rings so they're shooting off of uh, maybe a dark spot or a light spot or something they can see on the target and they're having to hold over to the left or to the right or high or low they're just using it as a reference so when the sun is dancing around you know the shadows yeah. are dancing all over and the sun's not really dancing but the but the shadows are dancing yeah. it makes it that much harder man Sharon holds good look at that she just, said she just, oh, tur she just turned 50 years old at the a month the ago a month ago yep. and I'm telling you what um, that's an amazing hold at 50 years old There's man no or woman I right there <laughs> I guarantee you I could not hold a bow that steady no question so Emily, we see she waited there, and now I mean it's a good time. There is no wind. She's got Justin Fuller holding an umbrella, but there's no wind right now. It's a good time to shoot. Good form, good push. Good wa watch the push on the bow when she shoots the shot. Coming uh, straight did she forward. She call upper. She did not call upper. I didn't hear the I cheer. Usually, yeah, if she, you hit a bonus ring, it's going to be a cheer, so right. I'm guessing not. Didn't see that cone out there, but probably so probably in that situation, um, she'd waited a while. She had to make that shot go. So she might have held up more towards the center anyway. Yep, so that was a 10. She did not call that, so she's going to go to 438. Lindsay Christensen next. That's a 10 for her. Also, 438. When we come back to shooting, Nathan. Right, so go ahead. I, I hate to interrupt you, but you see what she was doing right there? She's making notes. Yes. So when you are given your five-minute time to go out and judge targets, you got to write all that down on your notepad because you got to have, you got to be able to move through this quickly. Yes. And so as you're doing that, a lot of times the very first target you shoot, if you notice you're you're off, you're probably off on all the targets. Right. So you make that mental note really quick and then you go to that notepad and you're frantically looking at it like, oh my gosh, I gotta make these quick adjustments. Um, so as you said before, there's a lot going on. Look at that yes. elk all there right there. Just just clipping that line, just touching, and that's all it's gotta do. That's all it's gotta do. Yeah, that was a good point there, as we saw, Lindsay. Well, I mentioned before, down. it goes so fast. Yeah. I mean, it's just a blink and it's over. It seems like it takes a while if you're watching it, but it's really fast if you're an archer. Oh, it's so high. That looks yeah. like good to me. Yeah, yeah I was going to say. You know what's great about that arrow, PJ? What's that great about that? You can tell somebody it just barely missed the 12 because the score is the same. It's a 10. Whether it touches the line way away from the 12 or just barely misses it, it's still 10 points. That's it. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's pretty or ugly. You just get the points. That's right. That's it. And, you know, honestly, your score a lot of times does not reflect how well you shot because you can shoot fantastic all over the 12s constantly. And yeah. Just not hit them. For sure. And then you can slop arrows all in the 10 all day long and accidentally hit several 12 <laughs> rings and shoot a pretty decent score. All right, there is a look at our leader, Cara Kelly. She is looking determined and focused. She wants her first win of the year. As long as I've known Cara, she's always shot some sort of hinge release. There's yep. no trigger on that release. She just activates that by a pull of either uh, back muscle or however she's, you know, there's so many different ways to actually activate the shot, yep. but there's no trigger. And so that uh, doesn't allow her to command the shot. She has to just wait on it. Yeah, and that's, you know, that surprise shot is actually, is, you know, you'd think, oh, that's a bad thing. No, that's actually a good thing because if you are expecting the shot, a lot of times you can flinch and contract and do all sorts of things that make that arrow do funny stuff. I know that well, Nathan Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> I know well yeah. about that. Here we go. I believe that was Emily there on that last shot. And look where she hit. Just to the right. If you're expecting a little wind drift, 
Yeah, it's just probably ain't gonna happen at this point because the wind just died. Yeah, there's the boar. We are just left. And that is Sharon Wallace with a 10 on the boar. Okay, 455. So next up, we'll move to Emily McCarthy on the deer. Next up, Emily and McCarthy. she is just a tick right. Solid 10 for Emily. We've served 448. 448. Lindsay Christensen coming up next year. She is at the Black Buck. That's going to be a 10 for her as well. All right, let's see what Aaron did on this long target. Or no, actually, we would have Aaron on the... She on the I believe this is the animal. animal. Yeah, that is the yeah. long one. So, Nathan, you can see she's in that void there. That's actually not a scoring ring. That's just a core line where that center area can be replaced. It's not a scoring ring, so that was outside the tent. Right, that's a, a good point. Um, that is a question that gets asked from time to time about that, how that actually goes into the target. And, uh, there is a target out of the links actually on one side of that. They use it as a scoring line. Right, so it's not on every, it's, that's the only one I know that it's actually like that. So. Yeah. Okay, so that was our five arrows. So we got Cara Kella, 463, Sharon Wallace, 455. So they're going to be our only two. And I missed what he said as for who took third place. But you can see there we've got a three-way tie. Scoring rings, or bonus rings would have broken that. And Lindsay was Lindsay. leading. So she might be third. Yeah, yeah, Lindsay's, Lindsay should be third. Yeah. So Lindsay Christensen is going to round out our podium at third place. So they're going to set an extra target here. This is the sixth and final arrow. We see uh, Scott. So, yeah, information just came. Lindsay had eight bonus rings, so by way of bonus rings, uh, she beat out Emily and with seven. Crazy. Yep, so she'll finish fourth, and Aaron McGlattery will finish fifth. So, now we have our last chance archery, last chance arrow. This is going to be our sixth arrow. We are shooting at the turkey there. Well, s well these two gals here, it's like um, we've seen this. We've seen this numerous times between these two girls, and it never. Um, they're just as happy for the other one to win as they are themselves. They are. They are great competitors. And but yet. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to say, though, <laughs> that uh, um, um, there is a lot of mutual respect, but there is also a huge competitiveness in these yes. gals that drives them. Yes. They will be happy for the other, but they both want to win it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big point spread here, though. I yeah. don't see that happening um, unless, you know, barring something catastrophic happening that would cause car to – you know, have some sort of equipment failure or something like that to cause a, a bad arrow, but I don't see that happening. Good look at the turkey target. I'm not exactly, you know, just taking a quick look out there at the at the field, PJ. It's a medium to long distance for the turkey target. Yeah. That's about a four inch tin ring. If you look at the you know, the the eight ring gets smaller on the turkey than say even the boar hog or you know lo most other targets yeah. have a bigger eight ring but the ten ring stays consistent it's a, a right. four inch ten ring roughly and those twelves are a little bit a little bit bigger than a quarter yes. maybe a 50 cent piece yeah 
Yeah, so, so that kind of gives you a good reference as to what each one of these targets look like. But it's the it, it's how you manage your mistakes. Um, on these courses, you always want to make sure you shoot double digits. You don't want to get single-digit scores. Yeah. And so on targets like the turkey, the wolverine, where the eight ring gets much smaller, you kind of get a little tighter on those. Right, right. Because you don't want to make a big mistake. No. But notice that. Up there in the right-hand corner of that eight ring, it's got one arrow that's hit the 14 ring. Yep. Earlier, Tim Gillingham hit that. I got a feeling there's going to be arrow close to that in just a little bit. She has no, nothing to lose. Absolutely. Might as well go for yep. it. She's eight points back, so a little bit of a gust. Didn't like that. Benny Barger there holding the umbrella for her. So what that umbrella is doing is really not a, uh, it's not shading. Obviously, you can see he's not got it for shade. It's for wind, trying yeah. to catch as much wind as there is coming across there so she can make a good executed shot. And it's picking up and just a little bit. Up. Ah, just under. Hey, another thing about wind that uh, doesn't really get calculated very often, but when there's wind out there, it actually slows the arrow down some too. Yeah, yeah. So the longer the distance, the more you have to to the shot uh, because the arrow is actually slowing down a little bit. Right. So that's going to take her to 463. All she, well, she has to hit foam and she would win on bonus rings. <laughs> uh, so I think she, she, there, wins, yeah. she wins regardless, actually. Yes, exactly. Game is over. Car Kelly wins. Yeah, but exactly. She could miss. I'm. Yeah, I stand corrected. You're right. She could miss. <laughs> for novelty reasons, she's she's gonna she's gonna take a whack at it. And I yeah. got a feeling she's probably gonna try and either the shoot it in the 14 or the head. <laughs> the crowd is yelling. They want her to go for that 14. She's got one minute to shoot there. Yes, you are correct. So they're tied right now, but Carr is ahead on bonus ring, so absolutely she could miss. She doesn't need to shoot it, but we want her to shoot it. It's a crowd pleaser. You bet. Got pretty calm. It did. All right. She went for the 10. Very good. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you Solid go. Car, win. Car Kelly wins. <laughs> That's the important thing. <laughs> Whether the crowd gets to scream and cheer, hey, Car Kelly gets the win. That's right. Because we mentioned Nathan Brooks here. I mean, there's thousands of dollars on the line here. Mm -hmm. For sure. So she wants to win that to take that home. I, I, I guarantee you one thing. When she shot that 10, the crowd may not went crazy, but I'm betting Jason Kelly went crazy. <laughs> Her husband at home, you know, he's watching. And the kids. And that's exactly. Yes. Her dad's here. I saw him earlier, John Fernandez. I'm sure he's out in the audience. So there she is, Cara Kelly, our champion. How does that feel? You cruise to victory. Pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't been able to see many targets up in the Great White North. So um, coming down here, it was um, kind of roll with hopefully my shots paying off and <laughs> and judging will be good and everything will fall together. So I got to imagine it's got to feel good to come into a finals like that. You just had to not make mistakes, basically. Yeah, I mean, of course. But then, you know, you see 12s being popped and, you know, it's like you make good decisions. You stick with your game plan. You do what you have to do and um, hopefully bring home the W. So Well, the win was a factor, but it also kind of um, it would it would gust and it would go away and gust and go away. I noticed it, or it looked like you guys might have been aiming off just a little bit to try and uh, calculate for some of that. Did you do any of that? No, it honestly wasn't that bad, to be perfectly honest. Oh. Um, I did. I opted for sun. Um, I think it was more above us than it was actually on the field. I didn't feel much of anything. Well, there's the shooter's so. perspective. That's yeah. what we needed, DJ. <laughs> yeah. All right, Cara, congratulations. First win of the 2023 season. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Congratulations. Thank you Congrats. so much. And I just want to say thank you so much to my husband, my family, all your support. I wouldn't be here without you guys. So. Yeah, you. we just mentioned that they probably went crazy. They probably <laughs> did. <laughs> There's probably a party in Michigan right now. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Congratulations to Cara Kelly there. Folks, 
Don't go anywhere. We will be back here at Fort Benning. Right, Next up, please. we are going to bring out our senior pro competitors. Don't go anywhere. Number one qualifier in the women's shoot down, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. What a shot. You got it. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> so Kyle needs an eight to win. Eight to win. Oh, he went right at it. Better ten. Done. This guy is unreal. That's it. <laughs> and he got it. Never played safe killing hand. Hunter Vinny La Selva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. With thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com. What 
job. All right, welcome back everybody to the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am here at Fort Benning. Senior Pro is our class. Uh, Nathan Brooks, tell us what we're looking at there for scores. Well, like the last class, we got 15 points separating top to bottom, and Tony Taza is leading the heap there at 418. Our own Darren Christenberry. Darren Christenberry. Who I'm trying to fill in for and not doing a great job because how can you replace that guy at 406. So he's in second place. And really the battle here is also going to be for second and third because Joe Pitts at 405. Mark Kesey is at 404. And Keith Allstrom rounds out the top five at 403. So good race for second and third here. Kind of the same sort of thing we saw in the women's division where uh, there's a big lead for that first place. But look. This is still shooting, just like we said with the last time. You never know what's going to happen. All right, well, let's go back to Foley just to remember how this class shook out at the Hoyt Easton Pro-Am a month ago. We got four points between first and fifth. We could see some mixing up going on right here in this shoot down. The senior pro shoot down was a wild ride. Tony Taza came in as the number four seed but was only three points off the lead. There he goes. Yeah. Tony's, he's making some moves. He hit a couple bonus rings and quickly climbed to the top of the leaderboard. Matthews, that bow. Oh, he's not going to like where that landed. After shooting a five, Jeff Hopkins followed with a 12 on the Coyote, the longest and smallest target on the floor, to get to within four of Tazzy. For the sixth and final arrow, Hopkins center punched a 14, which forced Tazza to hit either a 12 or a 14 to take the win. Tony's shot was high of the lower 12 for a 10, and Hopkins stole the show. That was fun. That was a lot of fun out there. It was fun right at the point where I fived the black buck, but wow. You know, I just made a weak shot. I set this phase four up for Matthews about seven days ago, and I tell you, I've shot it so well in practice that coming out here tonight, I had a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. Yeah. All right, we want to get right to the action here. So we are going to go to Stephen Altizer. Stephen, bring out our archers. All right, guys, your next class is going to be Senior Men's Pro. Your fifth place qualifier from Waxhaw, North Carolina, Keith Ostrom with a 403 shooting for elite archery. Your fourth place qualifier from Bremen, Georgia, shooting for dart and archery with a score of 404, Mark. Keefe. Third place qualifier, score 405 from Windsor, Virginia, Joe Pitt shooting for Hoyt. From Spencer, Indiana, this guy right here. 1,300 competition archery media commentations in a row, Darren Christenberry. Your first place qualifier, score 418 from Boswell, Pennsylvania. Shooting for Hoyt, Mr. Tony Taza. All right, there, okay. Nathan. As we mentioned, you know, Darren Christianberry out there. If you're, if you've been with our broadcast, you know he's usually sitting here. We love Nathan Brooks. We love having you here too. Darren's usually sitting in the seat, and we are excited to see him out there because that's where he wants to be. Uh, you know, look, there is nobody. We talk about how hard Tim Gillingham works at archery, but I, I can tell you that nobody works harder than Darren Christenberry. And all those guys out there are obviously fantastic archers. But Darren Christenberry, 19 months ago, took up shooting a bow left-handed. Left-handed. He's done it his whole career right-handed, won world championships right-handed, competed all over the world as a right-handed archer, 
but had some physical ailments that wasn't allowing him to shoot competitively right-handed when he was ready to give up. Yep. And here he is on the big stage again in the senior pro division, shooting left-handed on the other side of the bow. So that's just amazing. He wanted that so bad. First up here, we're looking at Mark Kesey there. You can see this is the senior division. You see that little bit of glass over his uh, baseball cap there. Keith one. Allstrom's got it too. Got to be able to see those sight tapes. <laughs> yeah, there's a look at Darren Christenberry's shot on the black buck. A little bit hot, look like he was shooting at the low 12. So good look at him left-handed. Look at that form and follow through. Oh, no, no, Darren did not shoot at that black buck. That was the feeder he just shot yep. at. So Tony Taz is up first on the bore with a 428. Tony Tazza always out here, always in contention, just been doing this a long time at a high, high level. Runs an archery shop in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. There's Darren Christenberry. Darren Christenberry. Is he going to open with a 12? He got it. He is. I tell you what, he's been shooting so, so good. I watched him shoot a pile of arrows yesterday and never missed the dot on the practice range. He is excited to be out there, I can tell you, and we're excited for him. Now, next up, we've got Joe Pitt on that black buck. He shot a 10. That's going to move him to 415. Just a couple of yards hot for his yardage estimation there. His line was perfect on that low 12. There's Mark Kesey shooting the long one. So I think they've mixed those targets up a little bit. I don't think this antelope is the actual oh, yeah. furthest one. Oh, yeah, he brought it up. Now. You're correct. Yes. Because he's walking further to that yep. little guy down there. He, Boy. Scott Parrott, has changed the positioning. That is no longer the longest. Just like Scott, he makes the smallest target out there. The <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he does well, for sure. Trust me, I shoot his ranges every, every ASA event. And that little guy is a challenge, and we saw that, you know, for uh, Keith got an eight there, but we'll, we probably will see more than just one eight on that, that yeah. Wolverine. Yeah. The, so our third target is actually the longest now that I'm getting a look at the field. That would be the black buck there. It's a little bit longer than that Wolverine. So Joe Pitt, look at the stabilizer oh, yes. bars on this bow. Yes. Uh, I want you to talk about that. So a tight, well, a tight rope walker needs a balance bar. Here we go. And what you have in archery, you need to be able to get steel. So a, 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 a tight rope walk. Right there. It's hard for me to look, say that. A look at those V bars. <laughs> those needs. lower stabilizers. If we could pan out just a little bit and get a look at those big stabilizers. There we go. What that does, so it just creates an, am, a, an amazing platform that doesn't really want to tip left or right. Your, yeah. your only struggle is just keeping it up on the dot because you have your weight so far out on the bow that it really stabilizes. Thing. The problem is sometimes we're in the woods and it's really tight lanes. Yeah. And so those stabilizers can be a, a nuisance as well. Yeah. Um, but I'd say for the most part, uh, it, they're doing a really good job of getting him stable. And if you can handle the mass weight, it's oh, good. That's the that's the hard part. Just the bars. Look at that. Look at that. Darren Darren very weight and center punched it. I'm telling you guys, he does a lot better job of shooting <laughs> that bow than he does commentating. And he does a great job commentating. So, uh, man, I'm excited to see that for him. All right. First up, Keith Alstrom out there. And he's going to take an eight on that. Keith Alstrom, full time, is a tree trimmer. He's climbing trees and cutting down trees. Pretty dangerous job. Yes, it is. Tony Tazza takes a 10 on the feeder there. Actually, 38. Darren up next here. Look at the shot. Look at him squeeze through that shot with that thumb. Execute well, both oh. comes forward and just absolutely center punch that thing. Well, 30 suddenly, that's he's only eight points back. That's what we call clock hands. That is it. Because it's the center of the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Great shot from Darren. All right, let's see Joe Pitt here. 
on that antelope. Just under it there. I believe that's an eight. Yes, that's an eight. So by the reaction when Joe shot, I'm going to say his pin was a little bit low on that one because he didn't have that follow through that he typically would have. Right. Because um, he's really clean and smooth on his shot, and that one seemed like he was trying to get the bow to go up when he fired the shot. He's shooting that uh, the new Hoyt with the HBT cam, I believe, on it. A lot of good reviews on that uh, on, on that bow with that cam system. I believe it's the Stratus. Yes, I believe you are correct. That's the new Hoyt bow this year. So yeah, there's a look at our crowd here. We are, uh, you know, do have bleachers here. We're kind of in like a park-like area. There's a campground behind us. There's a boat ramp off to the side there. And we've got a pretty good turnout. We should mention we had over 1,700 archers here this weekend, which is up considerably from last year, about 400 more this year. And we've just been seeing killer attendance at the ASAs this year. Well, the ASA does it probably better than anybody um, when it comes to 3d archery you don't find a better venue than what ASA is and so there's kids here seven eight years old there's people here all the way up in their 80s I know for sure sometimes there's 90s there's classes for everybody if you've never been doing ASA you got to come out amateurs pros division whatever equipment you want to shoot traditional longbow recurve compounds crossbow they got it all about the only thing I haven't seen is that Japanese, um, <laughs> what do you call that? A big like long. Kyoto. But you or could something. still qualify. That still qualifies as a yeah, longbow, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Just not riding a horse, shooting it. Back All to right. the competition. Twelve here for Mark Kesey. Good for him. Good shot, Mark. I've shot with Mark for a long time in the Open Pro Division. This is his yep. first year shooting Senior Pro, yeah. I believe. And uh, he's excited about it. Uh, he is. The last few years, I know he's, he's just been telling me, I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. I got two more years. <laughs> Mark's a great guy from Georgia. Known it's, him for a long time. It's tough when you're 47, 48, and you're shooting against 22, 23-year-olds. Just the eyes are better. The strength is different. Yeah. All right, so this... This is going to be Tony Tazza there with a 10, 448. He's playing it safe. Darren Christenberry's pressing the gas a little bit. Did, did he call, call upper? upper? He did oh, not. He did not. So he stays oh. eight points behind I Tony just, Tazza there. I was just about to go crazy if Darren oh. hit three in a row. <laughs> Did not call upper on that one. Last we got Joe Pitt, and apparently he did call upper on that one. Yeah. Just as so. he's mentioning the stabilizers and what he does and how there he does go. it, he got it. Yeah, look at those. I don't know if they're 28s or 30s, but you don't see anybody else doing that. Like 12 and 15 are kind of the more common. And his are definitely bigger than that. Inches I'm talking about there, the length. So you would have to, if you're going to run those, typically what you'd have to do is scale down your weight on each bar. For sure. Uh, because obviously, you know, it adds up fast. Yeah. And right. so uh, you might run where you might have, uh, like Tony there has what we call a, a Y bar where just one is coming off of the side. He might have 18 to 20 ounces on the side. On the V bar setup like we saw that uh, Joe was using, especially at that length probably yeah. only needs four to six ounces on each side to uh, basically make it run and feel the same way there's a good look at tony tazza tony signature two finger release been shooting that forever i was at the very first tournament that tony won as a professional um me and Bobby Ketcher had actually tied, and we thought we had won the tournament. It was a different uh, IBO venue, and we didn't have this type of shoot down or anything come off the range. We thought we were winning, and uh, we were kind of celebrating, and Tony come off the range and <laughs> stopped the celebration. <laughs> that sounds like Tony. I think that's 2001, or no, 2000. So that's been 23 years ago. 
That was Joe Pitt with an eight there on that uh, board. And Mark Kesey shoots an eight as well. Good look at Keith right there. He comes through. The big thing Boom. to watch with all these shooters is how the front arm reacts when they shoot. Um, the follow through on the back end is not nearly as important as what the front end looks like. So Keith called upper on that, so that was only 10 points. Now we're coming back around to Tony Taz. And you mentioned Tony came off and, and won that tournament, and I bet he just said, was nonchalant about it. He's a man of few words. PJ, you, you couldn't be more <laughs> right. It was hilarious, actually, um, because he, he asked, who won? <laughs> and Bobby and I were standing there, and we was like, well, I I won. I beat Bobby on the on the X-ring count. We had the same score. He said, well, what'd you shoot? A 390. Huh. I shot a 390. Three. <laughs> Well, that's better than 390, Tony. You won. <laughs> and he just shook his head. Yep. Yeah. That was not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, it was, he's, it was great. He's one of the great guys out here. Just nice. Like I said, doesn't say much. You don't see much in the way of emotions. He's always smiling. He's having a good time, but he's serious. But I'm telling you, he's actually one of the funniest guys. He is. To ever be around. <laughs> it's very dry humor, and I yes. love it. <laughs> ah, yes, it is. I know his wife Brenda's out there watching. Oh, Shout you know out to you, is. Brenda. I say, so you see what he's got on the end of his stabilizer. Yeah. Obviously, anyone that's watching this sees that thing blow around. Well, so does Tony. And so what he's trying to do with that, he's trying to calculate how much wind drift is out there so he knows how much he might have to aim off when he's actually shooting the shot. So we talked to Cara about how it actually felt out there for her, how much wind drift was she getting. Now, she said that it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. Um, but what we see moving in the trees and what we see happening here, we obviously think it's a lot, but the shooter would know best. Yeah. And so... Um, that's also a very fine thread that he has on there, so it's going to move really easy. All right, first up, yeah. Darren All right, Darren Christianberry on that board takes an eight. Mm -hmm. 466 for him. Looking over, trying to see the scoreboard. That, that the board is a hard target to see. Yeah. So we've got the feeder. So this is, oh, I got the wrong score. I'm sorry, my correction, 458 for Darren Christianberry. I was looking at the wrong score. Joe Pitt is up next. Mark oh, we're on to Marquise now, who is at 450. Right under eight. the 12. We'll get you the score there for so Joe in a second. For those watching that don't know, this is a unmarked distance class yes. where they have to judge the distance. You yep. notice Mark just shot right under that 12. What that basically amounts to is he was probably off about one yard in his estimation of how far the distance was. Look at that pull. There we go. Perfect example of Perfect. what we talk about. Pull in the line. So you hear people say, yeah, but it has to touch when someone says, ah, it was pulling the line, and they'll say, well, no, 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 it's got to touch. That's what we mean by that, actually, when it's yep. pulling the line. It pulled it over and touched it. Yeah. So we're we're still dealing with some wind here, and it's gusting. And I, I you know, I would like to. I would like to think that it's not as bad out there as it is right here, but our yeah. stuff keeps blowing off the table. <laughs> yes, so they can't tell me there ain't some wind out there. Nathan, I had all these uh, insightful notes to share with folks, and they blew away about <laughs> 20 minutes ago. So. Yep. <laughs> all right, so we're coming down to our last chance archery, last chance arrow, and our only competitors in it are Tony Tazza at 468, Darren Christianberry at 458. Taking third is going to be Joe Pitt. And then fourth, Marquise Keith Allstrom is going to finish up in fifth place. Yeah, so one final error for these two guys. Um, Darren's going to have to do something spectacular. Yep. 
and Tony's going to have to have a catastrophe um, for this to go any other direction than Tony winning and uh, or than any other direction than Tony yeah. winning and Darren getting second place. Tony's going to be uh, he wants this one because he took second at the last tournament. I'm sure he doesn't want to finish up there this time, especially with a 10 point lead in the last arrow. Yeah, that that was a uh, that was a tough one for Tony to swallow. But uh, you know, watching Jeff win that last one was uh, was fun to watch. I know personally, I watched it and it was crazy, really, finish. really cool finish. <laughs> That's what you really want to see, to be perfectly honest. Regardless who the winner is, but yeah. um, I can tell you, Tony obviously wants this win, and uh, it looks it's looking really promising for him right now. There he is, Darren Christian Berry, getting his numbers. So I mentioned a second ago about Joe Pitt was shooting the HPT cam on the new Stratus. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure which model that is. I can't see it quite good enough. It kind of looks like an Invicta, a Hoyt Invicta that Tony's Tony. shooting. But he's shooting the SVX cam. And that's a cam they've had around... They've made some tweaks to it for yep. a while, but I used to shoot Hoyt a long time ago, back in uh, the early 2000 era, late 90s. And that cam, the original cam, came out in 2003. So that technology is still so good. Uh, it's been in their line Pop. with tweaks. Yeah, yeah. You know, for a long time. I don't know how many world championships that cam system has won. Tons. Very popular cam system, very popular. Bo, obviously, yep. and Hoyt. And uh, Tony represents them extremely well. That first win that he got in yep. 2000 was with a Hoyt. 23 years later, yep. he's still shooting it. He has been with Hoyt forever, which is rare in this. You know, a lot of times you see folks going from different bow companies, not Tony Tazza. He has stuck with there. Tony's been a, uh, a salesman for Hoyt. Yep. Uh, actually, I, that's not an Invicta. That's a new Stratus. That is a Stratus. I don't know which. It's the short one. It's the 36. The 36, okay. Yeah. It's the yeah. shorter bow. But here's the man. And here's the man shooting a orange elite verdict. Uh, Left-handed. I just got to keep saying that. Left-handed. Left-handed. 19 months ago, he was doing it right-handed. And you can see that turkey there in that shadow. It's just, it's hard to find those bonus oh. rings. I just yeah. missed it. He was shooting for that he 14. He went for it. Why not? <laughs> Excellent showing, Darren Christenberry. Way to go, Darren. So happy for you, buddy. So proud of you. Nobody so, works hard. Same deal. Tony Tazza does not have to shoot it. But will he? That's the what question. Look at him. <laughs> He's saying, I'll give you the choice. Come on, Tony. Give us a show. Why not? You can miss. Here we go. He had to double check the score. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, Tony, you can miss and you will win. <laughs> you are not risking anything. Like you said, his signature thing that he's done all these years, there's two things, two-finger release and his Hoyt bow. That's right. And uh, it looks the same now as it did 23 years ago, just as good as ever. Oh, he shot it in the head. <laughs> the eyeball. The head shot. <laughs> yeah. That's not a miss, folks. He meant to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. There you go. Scott Parrott's going to hold that up. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think Mike said he could have the target if he shot it in the oh, head. He was okay. going to give it to him. <laughs> there you go. Tony wants to add to his collection. There, yeah, Scott's here carrying it, comes. it right over. <laughs> Man of his word. That's the trophy he wanted. We could probably find another one for the rest of the shoot downs here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll find something else for sure. Bonus prize for Tony Tazza. Not only does he win, he wins a turkey target. <laughs> We'll have to ask him. Maybe he needed that one. Maybe, maybe he didn't have that one to practice on at home. <laughs> Well, there's your winner. There he is. Darren Christenberry will take second. I bet you Scott, just look at that. Scott, I know, just thought, oh, Tony, we might need yep. this for a couple yeah, more shoot down. I'll we'll give it to you later. Back. We'll bring this back. <laughs> <laughs> but Tony's going to come over here 
to pick up the headset. And we're going to ask him how that weekend <laughs> went for him. I always love listening <laughs> to these guys go back and forth. You, you can't hear it on the air, but uh, these guys are always going back and forth with each other. There he is, Tony Taz, uh, first win of the season. How's that feel, especially getting that target? Man, I'll tell you what, guys. I mean, the last couple of years, I've got a lot of runner-ups here. Yes. A lot of second places. Got second place at the last one. Whew, I just want to thank God for this. I mean, I've been working my butt off for this. And uh, finally came together for me. Heck yeah, buddy. That is freaking awesome. We were, we were watching you do this, and I was telling PJ about the very first tournament you ever won in 2000. I was there. Yeah, you were. <laughs> you actually thought you won it. That's exactly right. <laughs> you remember it well, don't you? You verified it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> How does that feel, Tony, 23 years later, yeah. still doing it at this level? I'll tell you what. I, I mean, like I said, I'm blessed for the – the support I get at home, the support I get at the shop, the, you know, you're, every year you, you're more thankful for the health that you have. And, um, I mean, 23 years playing this game, 25 years with Hoyt and, yeah. e and Easton. And, yeah. um, I mean, I just can't be more thankful for their support and, you know, everything they do for us out here. I couldn't agree more. Um, they've been a great supporter for archery and, and archers all across the globe. Not just right here, but uh, fantastic support. We even mentioned Brenda at home. We knew yep. that she's you a, betcha. sitting oh, you, there cheering for you. Yeah, so you know she's at home watching this. Um, I love you, babe. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations, Tony. Great win here at the second stop of the ASA Tour. Congratulations, bud. Thank you very much. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back here at the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am in Fort Benning. When we come back, we will bring you the Open Pro Division. Ryan Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments, is, it's just a lot. Vinny LaSelva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. With thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com.
number one qualifier in the women's shootdown, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. Lighting's been great here. You ain't had no issues. You know, you see all the targets well. If anything, some of the targets have been too bright. Got it. I'm going to shoot it for one more. Yeah. It's like right over top. <laughs> All right, Nathan Brooks, Open Pro here at the Black Eagle Dart and Pro-Am. There's our leaderboard. Tell us what we got. Well, from top to bottom, this is our tightest race of the night. And really, for first, second, and third, this is also the tightest because Chance is at 428 at the top of all those guys. Chance Bobef, that is. And Hunter Hogan, who I shot with today, shot 426. Absolutely outstanding. And Brandon Reyes, who led yesterday's scores, uh, shot four up today, so he got a total of 424. And Ryan Jeffries, who shot outstanding today, blistered that course actually at a 424. And Joe Goza rounds out the top five at 420. All right, Nathan. Well, we want to go back to Foley once again to see how this one finished up because there's a familiar name at the top who we do not see on this leaderboard today. These these guys are the cream of the crop with in unknown yardage judges. This is going to be a good race with 12s and 14s in play. We don't know who's going to win this one yet. In open pro, Dan McCarthy came into the final with an eight point lead over the other four archers who all were tied at 418. Well, I think that got it. Yeah, that shot that 14. That's how you make a move right there. Levi Morgan was one of those guys, and he only made it into the finals by winning a one-arrow shoot-off that otherwise would have sent him home. Once he got to the shootdown, it was clear Levi's mindset was, if you ain't first, you're last. Or, or, are you kidding me? Or, <laughs> Derek Christopherry, are you kidding me? <laughs> Morgan hit three 14s out of his six arrows to reel in and pass McCarthy and add further credence to his legend as one of the best 3D archers we've ever seen. Yeah, there was no doubt I was gonna earn that win. When, when you got McCarthy eight points ahead of you or McCarthy 20 points behind you, you're gonna earn the win. And, and I just made a decision. It's never been my style to lay up. And I just come in here and I said, I'm either gonna make a run at it or I'm gonna be in fifth. And um, I, picked, I picked the ones I wanted to be aggressive at and I hit all the ones I aimed at. All right, Nathan, so we have five totally new archers that we're going to see in Open Pro tonight, so we're going to go to Steven Altizer to bring him out. All right, next up is the men's Open Pro with a score of 420 from Henniger, Alabama, Joseph Goza, shooting for Darton. From Shepherdsville, Kentucky, with a score of 424, shooting for Matthews, Ryan 
Jeffries. From Lynchburg, Virginia, with a score of 424 as well. Shooting for Matthews, Brandon Reyes. From Columbia, Missouri, with a score of 426. Shooting for Matthews, Hunter Hogan. The guy who's learned to judge again from Mount Juliet, Tennessee with a score of 428, open pro, Chance Bobeff. Looks for Chance Bobeff. All right, gentlemen. He has just, we've seen him out here. He's tried the known game. He had a great weekend here, but what we wanted to mention was, I tr we have terrible, internet service here so I wasn't able to get on the computer we were trying to come up with how long it's been in open pro when we have not seen Levi Morgan and or Dan McCarthy and years we're well, talking years we've got some statisticians working on it right now they don't know that it's dated back to the early 1800s <laughs> so I mean they'll come up it with an answer like eventually <laughs> but uh, no doubt uh, they are the most dominant two professional open pro 3D shooters we've probably ever seen, uh, with the exception of maybe Jeff Hopkins. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's Hats it's, off it's, to it's these new guys. Faces. It's new faces, yeah. and uh, it, it's nice to actually see new faces. Not that we don't enjoy seeing those guys, but uh, it, it's it's fun to you know meet more of the personalities that are out here and. I, uh, I shot with Hunter Hogan uh, this this weekend, and whoever named him, obviously his mother or his father, <laughs> named him properly because he's yes. an amazing hunter. Amazing hunter. Amazing hunter. Yep. And he is obviously a fantastic shooter, yep. not just a hunter. And uh, we're already off in scoring arrows. That's going to be a 10 for chance. And you will see Levi Morgan out there. The camera will catch him. He's the umbrella man for Hunter Hogan tonight. I'm not <laughs> sure he knows how to even do that. <laughs> Someone probably gave him. Keith Allstrom, he's an old pro at that. He probably <laughs> told him. Yeah. They should have got my advice. I've held oh. umbrellas a bunch. There you go. That's, that's it. That's in there. 12 for Hunter, all right. So just Boom. tied up right there. Just like that, we are tied. There's Levi Morgan. <laughs> oh, it looks like he's the umbrella man maybe for Chance. I thought Hunter. But maybe he's holding for Chance. He Brandon is holding Reyes. for Chance. Okay. Yeah, Brandon Reyes got one really close there on that black buck. Oop. A little of the arrow, but Brandon Reyes. But there's a perfect look at foam that, look how crackly yeah. it is. It's hard to tell sometimes where the lines right. are at. It's super hard. It is a 10. All right. Brandon Reyes, he runs the trailer out here for True Ball and Excel, one of the big sponsors of ASA and CAM, and he is working when he's here this weekend. He shoots and he works. All right, now Ryan Jeffries have better got this antelope because me and him's going antelope hunting a little later this year all together. Right. Oh, well, there you there, go. That's Center it. Center 10. That's all That'll do right there. I'm proud of that guy. Ryan Jeffries. <laughs> <laughs> From Shepherdsville, Kentucky. 434 is Ryan Jeffries. All right, Joseph Doza. He's an engineer, I believe. Yes, Ryan he is. Jeffries. Uh, yeah. uh, a civil right, engineer. Yep. Uh, I believe he works for the uh, – so we're hearing from Mike Tyrell that Hunter Hogan actually is in the lead because he's got more bonus rings, two more bonus rings than does Chance Boba. Oh, so that's important. That when is it comes important down to, to end, know because yeah. you can win the tournament based on 12 count. Yep, that's going to be, and Chance Bobuff, I mean, we talk about him, we just, I had to go ask him real quick, 16 times he has shot a perfect 900 in Vegas, which he has won three times. Well, that just, just tells you how hard it is to win that actual event. I mean, yep. it's hard enough to get into the shootoff, let alone win the thing. Um, it's impressive that he's won it three times. Exactly. It's crazy impressive he's made the shootoff 16. 16. That is, there is no one who's 
in so that league. Ryan Jeffries makes a shoot off last year for the first time yep. as a pro. I, I know Ryan very well. Um, like I said, we we do some hunting together and obviously a lot of shooting together. And there's probably not a more fan favorite amongst our crowd members. Love than Ryan Jeffries. And if we get a chance, there's a we'll see all these kids out here. They they got fat heads of them. They fat lo heads. <laughs> absolutely love Ron Jeffries. Oh, that's great. That was a surprise. His wife made those up. So target number that's one there 10 for, for Joseph goes. Yes, yes, that mm -hmm. would be him. Four forty. He got to ten. Now we'll go back to chance. Let's see. He's got to do some battle in here. Oh, did he call upper? We're going to find out. 12. Yes, he did. He did. 450. All right, Hunter Hogan. Hunter Hogan is about seven feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> He's huge. And about 180 pounds. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> he is a bean pole. There's a 10 for Hunter Hogan. All right. So, 448 there. Speaking of Hunter, so I, as I said, I shot with him this weekend. He's shooting the Matthews V3X. That's a 33-inch axle to axle bow. And most people think that's not a acceptable length for a target bow. And I'm using air quotes for you people yes. that are listening um, when I said target bow. But... What we're seeing in today's bow technology is, number one, the bows are getting shorter, but the overall length of these things are actually still pretty long because yeah. they have giant cams on them. Yep. And so they act like a longer shooting bow, if you are familiar with how we basically ranked bows in the past of, you know, based off their axle axle length and brace height and that sort of thing. There's your 12 for Ryan Jeffries. Did you hear the crowd? Love him out there. <laughs> well, he comes with his whole family, and he's got four kids, three, four kids. He's got a bunch of them. I know that. Yeah. And all their friends. All right. So, Nathan, let's shake this out here. So we got Chance Bobuff in the lead, 450. Hunter Hogan, two points behind, 448. Ryan Jeffries now in third, 446. Brandon Reyes, 442. And Joseph goes at 440. <clears throat> so what we're going to have to see here from Joseph, Joseph is really going to have to get aggressive. He's going to probably have to hit a 14 ring yeah. or two. And Brandon might even have to stick one in there too uh, to get back in the race for second or third. Yeah. Or, well, I mean, it's just a few points. It's really not that big of a swing from there to first uh, if you hit a couple of 14 rings. Good look. Brandon holding there. I don't know which true ball thumb button release that is, but I think it's the goat. I think it's the goat, too. Speaking of goats. There's, <laughs> there's what we call the Hunter. speed goat. <laughs> <laughs> so look at Ryan Jeffries. Watch the follow there. through. His follow through is always really clean. Yep. All right. So he's first. He called the upper, but he is left. That's going to be a 10 for Ryan Jeffries. 446. We're going to go to Joseph Goza next here. Should be, I think, a 456. What Ryan will be. Should move him to 448. 448. Yes, you're correct. My math, math is hard, Nathan. I'm well, just horrible at it. You've already taken off your shoes. <laughs> There's not much it's more over, I got to count. It's over 20. <laughs> it's tough. Actually, 22. You got that one weird foot. <laughs> Thank you for telling the world about that. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's a good shot right yeah. there. With those crazy, the cracked paint and all that, you got to sort all that out if you're Scott Parrott. There you go. Yeah. Agree totally with that call. As you said, got to be clear evidence that it's out, otherwise it's in. Mm -hmm. I think that's a Vegas 3T that he's shooting. Or Vegas ET. The Darton. Yeah. Yes, the Darton. Mm -hmm. All right. It's the longer version of that bow. If that, if that helps. 
on the Wolverine. The pesky Wolverine. <laughs> I tell you, uh, PJ, we've not had things blown off of our table. No. Recently. And, uh, You're right. Since they've started, it's actually been pretty calm. In first place is Chance at 462 and 18 bonus rings. Hunter Hogan is at 458 and 19 bonus rings. All right, we're going to have our scores update here in a second. There we go. 62 for Chance Bobuff. Hunter Hogan, 58. Ryan Jeffries, 56. Work, working his way up. Brandon Reyes, 52. Goza, 48. Yep, and that's the three hours. We got two to go for sure. There will be a six, but we don't know how many will be in it. Right, good look at Joseph Goes has been shooting this game a long time. Was shooting so long that he, when he started out, he shot this compound bow with his fingers. No release. He was a big champion shooting it with his fingers. So I shot with Joe when he was 14 years old, <laughs> and he shot a release, and he did it for a long time. And then he switched. And then to he went fingers. to fingers. I gotcha. Okay. Good look at Hunter Hogan there, holding that bow nice and steady. Just over the low twelve. Good There's shot. Joseph Goza. Good follow through. Just yeah. over that low twelve. That's a. Uh, is that our longest shot? Uh, the black buck is. Is target three? Target three is our longest. Yes, that is the black buck. All right. So that's Brandon. Brandon Ray is on the hog, and that is a 12. So he's 464. Now this is going to be Ryan Jeffries. Shoot. Yeah, he went for it. Just a little right there. And honestly, he's he wants to win. Yep, you, and you got to make a move, and that was the one to get after it. You had a pretty good aiming spot, just just went left. Okay, All right, yes, Joseph Goza, this is the longest target. Take a 10 there. Move to 458. I'm going to come around here to Chance. It's great to see Chance in the open pro class after being so successful in no pro class. Chance Bobuff, his first year with Darton. He takes a 10 there on the antelope for 72. And Hunter Hogan on the pesky Wolverine. So three of these targets out here. It's a 10. Six. Yeah, I was going to say, he said Ryan Jeffries. That's Hunter Hogan. Right. He's got a 10, 468. So three of these targets out here have a color change on them. What I mean by that is uh, like the antelope has a white, and or a white and brown color change. The black buck has a black and white color change. And the Wolverine has a black and brown color change. So that really helps for aiming references, as we were talking about earlier. The black hog and the feeding deer don't have the color change. So fortunately, the black hog is not a ridiculously long shot, but it's difficult to find where the rings are at. You can't see them. It's just black. You're looking for some sort of you know, bright spot or dark spot or something you can pick up just to aim and reference off of that. So uh, I don't know what it looks like out there, but I can tell you that shooting that target long enough, it does make it really difficult to pick that exact spot. There's the Wolverine for chance got the 12. I don't know. I can't see his cone. He called up or You so talked about it. the change of color in the Wolverine. That's like wet mud to dry mud, though. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Hey, That's not much of a change. <laughs> but it doesn't take much. That's the thing. It, you're right. Wet mud to dry mud. <laughs> but you can see that black and brown change. And so a lot of times, and Chance hit the upper. He called upper on it. I'm guessing right. he probably aimed right at the color change and added a yard and called upper. And got it in there. And it just rises right up into it. 
So I believe that's that's Hunter. All right, Hunter Hogan gets a 12. Moves him to 480. He needed that, of he course. Did. We believe Chance matched him, so. But here's Brandon. He got the lower 12, and I'm sure he, yep. All right. 476. Brandon Ray is not going out quietly. He's swinging for the fences. Uh, Jeffries, just a little left. Just He's left. Hitting just a little left out here. Yep. Um, we saw that on the 14 ring, just left there. 474 after a 10 for Ryan Jeffries. Now we got Joseph Goza at 58. Joseph Goza. Fourteen. For Joseph. Fourteen. He went there. for it. That's Boy. our first look at it. <laughs> That's inside out. Way to go, out, Joseph. Seventy-two. Boy, he just jumped himself back in there. Skipped the sixties oh. altogether. He. Oh, <laughs> if Chance hit this twelve and called it, he did call it. He did. Oh, Joseph did what he everything he could do, but that's <laughs> he's going to be just short. So we're going to have yep. Chance, Hunter, and Brandon in the final three. And Ryan makes it. He's within ten. Ryan Jeffries. He's at four seventy-four. Oh, that's right. So Joseph's Math is the only hard for one. me too. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph's the only one we're going to drop. He's going to take fifth place. Look at the leaf on there. <laughs> Stuck to it. <laughs> Wind got that right on there. Multiple leaves we got stuck on there. That's uh, that's. I don't feel the wind blowing right now. Interestingly, but they're leaving it up there. Well, I'm guessing that. I'm guessing that was from the uh, the rain a little earlier. Probably fell out of the trees and then just stuck. Look, There's ASA President Josh, Josh Grind. He's Couldn't out there working that. hard. Got that out there. That was probably getting his OCD. <laughs> uh, but now here we're putting out the turkey for our last chance archery, last chance arrow. Tony Taz is sorry. We're going to mess up your target a little more. <laughs> That's the price of victory, Tony. All those contingency checks you're going to cash, you can fix that target up nice. That is a, a Delta McKenzie strutting turkey. And that target, obviously, you see him putting that fan on there. Um, for those people shooting broadheads, it's a wonderful broadhead target, too. It lasts oh, yeah, forever. Yeah. It's a big old block of foam. Yep. Uh, I've got one that I've probably had since, geez, back in the early 2000s. And I've shot it a long, long time. Actually, it's probably about worn out now. But <laughs> There it is. Last chance archery. Last chance arrow. It is the turkey. He moved it out there pretty far, Nathan, and I, mm -hmm. I didn't see where he put the stake. Did he move him up? Any? Just slightly. Slightly. It looks okay. like maybe two or three yards from where they were, but the target is in a totally different position. So yeah. they're definitely having to come up with a good number here because it's it's a it's a stretch. It's out there. It's short of the black buck. So whatever that one was, it's shorter. They moved it closer than that, and they moved them up. So they're going to have that reference, assuming their numbers were good. Yeah, so the 14 ring is so hard to see on this particular target yeah, because it's, it's way up in the back of the animal yeah. target. And obviously it's, it's in the 8 ring, but even with yeah, good camera view, you can't see it. It's there. So... It's so difficult to aim. Like we can see, we can pick up feathers. You see yeah, the, the feather details kind yeah, of the obscuring the lines. Right. So, so an aiming reference here. I mean, it, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for someone to aim off of maybe the corner of where the a fan meets the target yeah. where it comes on and add, say, maybe four yards to their sight to raise up four inches or so and hit to that. actually hit that thing yeah. because it's so hard to aim yeah. up there in what I'd call no man's land. Maybe so. even five yards because that's a long stretch from 
that point of that fan up right. to uh, to that 14 ring. Ryan Jeffries up first. We're going to see. That's a two-finger B3 release that he's shooting. Well, actually, it's a three-finger, but he's using just two, two on it. Just over it. Yeah, going to be just high. <laughs> Good showing, though, for Ryan. Absolutely. Uh, if he takes five points here, uh, more than likely he'll finish fourth. Uh, but he had to go for it. Yep. Had to do it. 479 is going to be the final score for Ryan Jeffries. Here's Brandon Reyes looking for a podium finish. It's a true ball axle sight that uh, Brandon is adjusting. It's a super popular sight. I, uh, I couldn't imagine him shooting anything <laughs> well, else. Well, yeah. <laughs> since you work for the company and you help design the products, uh, and you probably use them. Um, Looks mention. like the Jesse Broadwater the fulcrum, one of those. With or is it the – it's got a finger uh, all the way around it. W without him showing me, I wouldn't yeah. know. But That's uh, a tough one. True ball axle stabilizer bars and obviously the Matthews uh, TRX. Uh, is that a 36 or is that a 40? Oh, just under the 14. I'm telling you, it's so hard <sighs> aiming up there. Um, of course, he could have misjudged that a couple of yards as well. Um, Obviously, yeah. not having the advantage or not having a range finder, knowing exactly how far it is, that's a good yeah. poke at it, regardless. And really, he had nothing to lose to shoot at it. Nope. Everything to gain. Absolutely. 484 for Brandon Reyes. He's going to lock up third place. That is a podium finish for sure. <sighs> this is a this is a big one. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he needs five. Well, if he hits foam, he takes second. Yes. Yeah. And Mike Tyrell was just explaining out there, like, that's even if you go for the 14, it would be hard to miss the target for where that 14 sits. You'd really have to do something wrong. We've seen it, though. Oh, yeah, well, yes, we have. <laughs> Listen to me talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, a, a little bit of yardage miscalculation. Wind pick up just a little bit. It could be bad. Um, he's not holding extremely steady. Uh, shake it. Yeah. Oh. But it's close. Ah, just oh, a little good high. run at it. Yeah. Definitely so a good he shot. He is going to end up great at 485. Great weekend for Hunter Hogan. Uh, it's his first, first pro shoot down. Absolutely. First, first one. First pro shoot down. Yep. Um, Shot really good all weekend. Like I said, I shot with him all day today. Uh, super solid. Never really had anything what I'd call scary away. Yep. Uh, so really controlled himself well and shot shot fantastic on the weekend. So good shooting. So Levi Morgan's probably sitting there saying, shoot at the 14, Chance. Shoot the 14. I would. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> Chance needs foam. That's it. And I guarantee you he's looking for the middle mass of a turkey <laughs> target. <laughs> it's been a while since he won one of these, so, yes, he's not going to take any chances, given his name. Yep, right there in the you middle. Go, right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good for you, Chance Boba. Chance Boboff's going to lock up first place. Hunter Hogan's going to be second. Brandon Reyes is going to be our third place finisher. And then, of course, Ryan Jeffries and Joseph Goza. So, so we didn't really see any change or jockeying in there as far as the actual final outcome. No. But they definitely went back and forth. Absolutely. Chance going to come over here and give us a word. Vegas championships, I'm sure he wanted this one. Because, it, like I said, it's been a while since we've seen Chance Boba win one of these tournaments. He's definitely won them before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I don't – I can't remember the last one that he won, but the last one I remember him winning was a known, uh, known pro tournament in Kentucky. Yep. And he may have won since then, but that's the last one I remember. Yeah. And that would have been 2018. I, I know been it's in been a, a lot while. of shoot-offs, yeah. though, since he, then. He for sure has. 
He just gave a little fist bump there. I mean, everybody was there to shake his hand because Chance Bobuff, you are our open pro champ. How does that feel? Uh, it's pretty surreal, man. I've been I've been working hard all year, you know, putting in a lot of time, a lot of arrows, and uh, just seemed like one weekend to the next it would always be something. But uh, everything came together this weekend. And I couldn't be couldn't be happier. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, you know, watching you shoot this weekend, uh, I don't think you've lost the yardage judging ability. <laughs> and we know you haven't lost the shooting ability, obviously, uh, with all the accolades you've had shooting a bow over the years in indoor archery. What a lot of people don't really know about you is you started it all right out here shooting 3D. I sure did. In, in uh, 97 with my first year in ASA, and uh, I haven't missed but a handful since. So uh, I love it, and I love to see the sport grow and tickle to be out here still competing with the best in the world. Yeah, well, congratulations on the win with the new Darton. Thank you. And uh, job well done. Thank you Congratulations, very much. Chance. Thank you so much. All right, great win there for Chance Bobuff. Folks, we will be back here in a little bit for our known pro last uh, class of the night, known pro finals. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hunter Vinny La Selva explains why he shops at LancasterArchery.com. I'm a patient man in the woods, but when it comes to shopping online, not so much. That's why I choose Lancaster Archery Supply. They make it easy to order all my archery gear. With thousands of the newest and finest products right at your fingertips, ready to ship to your front door. Here's your order, Vinny. Or tree stand. Hey, depending on where you're hanging out, you might even get it before you get home. For all your archery needs, shop LancasterArchery.com. Jeffries, Mr. Ryan Reed, Chris Hacker, Alan Connor, Benny Barger, and your number one qualifier from Voorheesville, New York, Jacob Sluzard. I thought I could hang with these guys and I wanted to prove that, but winning after five tournaments is it's a lot. Elite is the world's most advanced and accurate archery experience. We challenge you to go to your local retailer and ask for Elite to demo the Omnia today. CBE, that's custom bow equipment. I'm talking about field tested, yeah. fully improving. Wow, what a match. Premium archery accessories. Check out the full line at custombowequipment.com. Oh, 
Oh, he got what it. a shot. He got it. <laughs> Unbelievable. So Kyle needs an eight to win. Eight to win. Oh, he went right at it. Better ten. Done. This guy is unreal. That's it. And he got it. Never played it safe killing hands. The number one qualifier in the women's shoot down, Sharon Wallace. Your first place qualifier, Jeff Rainey. Your number one qualifier, Miss Cara Kelly. Mr. Levi Morgan. That's Mr. McCarthy. I am finishing up the day on this turkey that I should be able to get, but we will see. All right, welcome back everyone to the Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am here at Fort Benning, Georgia. Known Pro is our division that we're about to get into. Nathan Brooks, there's our leaderboard. Tell us about it. Well, it's some very familiar names in Robert Householder and Justin Hanna right there at the top. And obviously you see Jesse Broadwater on this scoreboard, but we've got some new guys in here at oh, yeah. Austin Taylor and Lane Brandt. But Robert's at uh, 452, and Justin Hanna is at 448. So that's one shot difference, basically, right there oh, between yeah. the two. And Austin at 444, just a few points back. And Jesse also at 444. And Lane finishes out the top five at 442. When we were in Foley, Robert Householder was the only one of our archers tonight who was shooting in Foley. Let's go check out how that one ended. Shooting for Darton, James Lutz. In known pro, Jimmy Lutz carried that record 60 up into the finals, but that was only eight points better than the fifth place qualifier. With range finders in use, you knew it was gonna be a dog fight. Kyle got it. Yeah. 2022 known pro shooter of the year, Kyle Douglas hit five of five bonus rings to put himself in the lead. Mike Tyrell's trying to talk him into yeah. going for a bonus ring. Shoot to center 10, Kyle, <laughs> yeah. and go to the bank Monday morning and cash all those checks. Only his sixth yeah. and final arrow did not hit a bonus ring, but that's only because he needed just an eight to win. He shot a 10 and walked off with the big prize. Yeah, the first uh, arrow I had the closest target, so I knew if I didn't go for that one, everybody else would. So I, had, I knew if I started off right and just kind of kept on a roll, Hopefully things would go in my favor. So hit that one and, and started shooting, you know, good and just kind of held strong. All right, Nathan, we are going to break out the range finders here for these archers. But first, we want to go to Stephen Altizer, who's going to bring our archers onto the field. All right, guys, the last group of the day is the open, known pro, known pro. First time ever shoot off Lane Bryant shooting for elite archery, elite archery from Marshall, Missouri with a score of 442. Fourth place qualifier from Micah, Florida. Micah. Shooting for Hoyt Archery, Jesse Broadwater. From Manitoba, a score of 444. Setting in third place, shooting for PSC is Austin Taylor. From Asheville, North Carolina, shooting for elite archery, Justin Hanna. Your number one qualifier, 
Score 452 from Millbrook, Alabama. Shooting for Hoyt Archery, Robert Householder. All right, Robert got some fans in the crowd here. That's great to see. And as we mentioned, uh, Lane Brandt and Austin Taylor, both first time in this shoot down. Yeah, that's right. Um, Robert being from Alabama here runs a archery shop down in Prattville yes. called Archery Unlimited. And you'll see a lot of people here wearing those jerseys you bet. and caps and things like that. And he is leading the pack here, but a couple of new guys one from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Austin Taylor. Um, I hear lots of good things about how well this guy shoots, yep. and uh, obviously he made it into this shoot off. So that's a tall order right there. So and there's a well-known guy in the archery world. Is this Jesse his first Broadwater. time? Is this his first time? <laughs> it's a good look at him in that new Hoyt Stratus that he's shooting, uh, also with the um, HBT cam, their new cam for this year. I believe that's the Stratus as well. Jesse Broadwater, multiple Vegas champ, comes out gunning for that Swing 14 it. right away. <laughs> We've got bonus range. Now remember, range finders, they are in play. We'll walk you through as we go through each of the targets. We have the distances. We'll tell you how far they are. Good look at Lane and Lane, or that's Justin, excuse me, Justin Hanna. Looky there. He got the 14 there. <laughs> But we're down on the hog, who is, this is going to be Robert Householder. This is 39 yards is the That's wild a 12. boar. 12 for Robert. Wild boar is moving to 464. 464. They are allowed to use range finders. They know exactly how far. Justin Hanna clicked that one. And smoked a 14. 14. And the deer is 36 yards. So, not surprising. You're going to see a lot of folks go for that one. Should move him to 462. Just two points now behind Robert. And then we got Austin, Austin Taylor. Austin Taylor here. from Winnipeg, Manitoba, the Great White North up there. The eight ring there. I want to say he was probably, I, I got a feeling he was probably shooting at the 14 and just kind of got off. Yep. Got off target there just a little bit, but a lot of targets left. That's going to be an eight for a 452. Here comes Jesse Broadwater. Oh, just over that 14. A little hot. I believe he still caught that eight line. That's a close one. Eight yep, Jesse. he got the eight. So that is going to give him a 452 as well. Lane Brandt had to win a one arrow shoot off closest to center just to get in here against Angus Moss. Lane won that, and that's why he's here. And he starts Comes off with, with a 12. 12. You betcha. Why not? Should move him to 454. That's going to put him in third place. Just like that. He yep. hopped up. This one we typically see, Nathan, a lot of jockeying of positions here, guys going for boating rings. There's uh, Levi Morgan again out there with his buddy Justin Hanna on the – I wonder if he's telling him how far the targets are. <laughs> yeah. You're just in hand. Do you use the range finder or you just ask <laughs> just Levi? Just ask Levi. <laughs> just ask Levi. It's, it's more accurate. No, I think that one's a half yard farther than that, Justin. <laughs> yeah, don't trust that range finder. It's, I know it. It's off on these particular <laughs> targets. <laughs> Good look at Austin Taylor there. Shenka, he's excited to be out here. The PSE Dominator duo he's shooting there. Um, it's a new bow from PSE this year. Yeah, don't know which cam system that is. I couldn't see. It looked like it might have been the S2, uh, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, they offer multiple cams on that one. At least three, if not four. Ooh, he went for that. That's going to be close. That's that angle, close. I can't it's tell. It's hard to tell can't tell no. so one thing you'll see with all these guys um, I, I would just almost guarantee you you'll see it I don't know 100% but with all these guys you'll probably see a peep side that has some sort of clarifier in it because they're shooting a high enough power in their lens that they can pick up a lot of rings um, it's not always true there's a few guys right. out there that don't do they don't do that. They may, may shoot a, a low power or even nope. 
no power, uh, but majority of them that are in this class use a lens. Look at that 14. Maybe it's Got 14. It. Oh, <laughs> man, that's so close. That's on the deer, right? The Justin that Justin just 14. Deer. Yep. That's, yeah. Robert Householder. Look you there. There you go. Yeah, they, as you mentioned, they are all shooting lenses in their scopes, in their sights, and that has magnification four, six, eight are typical. But as you mentioned, it could be a two, could be a zero in terms of power. So Justin comes up a little oh. bit low right there. I'm guessing he was shooting at the, uh, the lower 12 there. A little bit of breeze down there. You notice he shot yeah. left, too. He didn't just shoot low. And if you look at the breeze at the wind That's blowing down there and the, uh, the little signs that are out there, they're blowing around, too. Yeah. <clears throat> <sighs> just under that is Austin. It's going to move him to 460. Here we go. Let's see what Jesse does here. Now, this Upper is a 12 was called, they said, for Jesse. If I could just sell stabilizer weights to one group of people, it'd be this class. They always have a lot of stabilizer weights. Yep. Oh, that one's going to hurt a little bit for Jesse. Yeah, 457 for Jesse. Second place is Justin Hannah at 470. And third place now is Lane Brandt at 464. All right, so we'll run down here. Robert Householder, 478. He's staying in the lead there. Justin Hanna, 470. Austin, oh, excuse me. Uh, Lane Brandt is now in third yeah. at 464. Austin Taylor, fourth, 460. Jesse B. Broadwater at 457. <coughs> so we should finish out our distances here. The Black Buck is 47 yards. Antelope 33 and target five. The Wolverine is 43 yards. So, uh, good look at Lane and his elite verdict that he's shooting. Looks like he's got a CBE elevate side on there as well. Yep. B Stinger stabilizers. Ooh, oh, he went for that. 14. So, I think everybody so far has shot at that 14 on that uh, deer. I think that from that angle, uh, it looks, looks like it's going to be it in. Looks good. But Sometimes the angles, the camera angle yeah. can play a little trick on you. So, all right, Jesse f up first here on the wild boar. He went for it. That's that looked good. That's naked right eye. where it is. Oh, oh just oh, oh, oh. missed it. So Man. close. So close. He's giving it all. That's an eight for Jesse to 465. Boy. Yeah, we're going over to Lane Brandt. Got it. And he got it. All right. 478. 14 there for Lane Brandt. Good for him. Making some moves. Robert is one of a select few group of people that shoot a command style release. Yeah. And in this situation which it's actually calmed down quite a bit but uh, you know we talked about it way earlier in the broadcast before we actually come on board with the uh, uh, with the live feed but we were talking about uh, Tim Gillingham and his command style shooting Ooh, that's close but just Eight a for Justin low Hannah. left 478 but with that style of shooting uh, if you can mentally handle it really well you do have a pretty good advantage because you can get the pin there and when the pin gets there you shoot it but you got to hold it long enough and get your pressure right it's not like it's super easy uh, but it is a great way to do it if you can mentally handle it and there's not many people that can do that so kudos to Robert that was a 12 for Austin Taylor to move him to 472. So now we've got a two-way got a two -way tie for second. That's Robert Householder. He's holding on there now at 10-point lead, 488. Justin Hanna and Lane Brandt at 478. Austin Taylor, 472. And Jesse Broadwater, 465. Justin Hanna shooting the new Scott Select three-finger release there. 
That's his style there. He's always got that thing in his teeth before he shoots. <laughs> I'm sure as uh, sure as Dennis loves it. <laughs> My wife is a hygienist, and so you don't touch anything with your teeth. <laughs> Especially something metal. Right, like exactly. Cut edges on Only it. Only soft foods. <laughs> Very steady. So steady. Oh, just over. He's got a little bit of left going. Um, yeah. He's been on the left side of everything he's shot so far out there. Center 10 there for Lane. He's actually shooting at the upper, but it's just off. On that 47 yard black buck, that is the farthest one. Here's Austin Taylor. Shooting at, at a 14, and he got it. Oh, 39 yard hog. He did. That's a no brainer. So look at that, Boom. that four fletched arrow right there. Um, in calm conditions, that four fletch is amazing. Really, really good. When it gets a little breezy, four fletch also catches a lot of wind. Catches a lot of wind. So you got to have a lot of point weight up front to steer that thing. And there's another 14. There's another 14 on that deer. Jesse Broadwater. They've all, they've all owned that deer so far. <laughs> 479 for Jesse. Uh, Austin moved to 486 with his 14. Now we're coming around to Lane Brandt who is on the black 47 yard black buck. Take a 10. 88. So householders coming around to the 33 yard antelope. Hmm. Well, he only needs a 12 here. He doesn't have to get crazy and get aggressive at trying to hit a 14 or anything like no. that. So, oh man, look at that. Just a 10 or 12. Scott's checking for an upper call, looking for it, and he got it. He got it. There we go. That was a close one. Really close. So that moves Robert Householder to 500, which getting to 500 at an ASA, that's incredible right there. And we're not done. Right. Yeah, we, we got at least one target left. <laughs> so let's eight go back for Justin So. That moves him to 486. Justin Hanna, 486. So Lane Brandt now jumping up into second place, 488 from fifth. Worked his way to second in his first ever pro shoot down. Yeah, he shot really solid. He hasn't done anything crazy, um, but he's he's been solid on everything he shot so far. Like I said, got a 10 on that last one. And this is our fifth arrow, and Mike Tyrell's explaining it right now. Right now, nobody's within 10 points of Robert, so this could be our last arrow. Yeah, if uh, if Robert shoots a 10 here and Lane shoots a bonus ring, if Justin shoots a 14 ring. Yeah, and uh, Austin, too. The, yes, yes, yeah, sorry. And if Austin shoots a 14 ring, then yeah, we'll wins. have a final arrow. But otherwise, um, but now if Robert hits a 12, he puts him out of reach. He puts him out of reach. With that shot right there. And he is shooting the 43 yard Wolverine. And he's center, center 10. 10. Okay. That's all Which right. Is, that's really all you want to do in that situation because yeah. you know that you're. Uh, you're that's making that right there for somebody on the antelope. Ah, uh, that should be. That's Lane. I believe that's Lane. Justin Hanna, currently 46 and 46 bonus rings. All right, Justin Hanna on the hog. Four. Excuse me. Straight left again. Yeah, straight left again. All right, that's an eight. Going to move him to 94, 494 for Justin Hanna. Austin Taylor went at that short deer, 36-yard deer. Oh, he Straight just left. missed. And now he's still tied with Justin at 494 and 46 bonus rings. 494, so he's tied with Justin on score and bonus rings. I'm not sure how they sort that out. We're going to find out. Ooh. Jesse left again. Everybody. We're seeing left. a lot of that. I don't left. know if the lighting is changing out here. I mean, if you look now, there's no shadows. Yeah. Everything is covered. All right. So he's saying if we have a tie, 
on scores and bonus rings. We will have a shoot off, one hour shoot off close to the center. I thought that was only for the winner, but I guess not. But here's a 14. They have to have Lane a Brandt. good shot, Lane. They have to have a clear cut podium. Yeah. So first, second, third has to be sorted out. So, so guess who just shot himself into the final arrow? Lane Brandt. We need a sixth arrow. Yeah. So I believe every shoot off we've had so far, we've only had two final shooters in, on the sixth arrow. Ex uh, no, 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 that ain't right. We had three on the open pro division. Yeah. So Robert's still here, obviously, in the driver's seat for the win. Um, okay, we're getting a word from Mike Tyrell so now. Okay. So here we go. So Lane and Justin Hanna are going to shoot. They are going to shoot closest to the center of the 12, Lane and Justin. They're going to see who separates them, Austin and Justin. Or Austin, excuse me, excuse me. I got to get my um, Justin and Austin. They are going to shoot off closest to the center of the lower 12 is usually what they do. And the winner of that is going to be our third place finisher because they're tied in score and bonus ring. They're both at 494. Then we'll go to Lane Brandt and Robert Householder, who are shooting for second and first. And Lane will go before Robert. Robert will have the last shot. So score won't matter here. Like you said, it'll be Correct. the closest to center of the low 12 yes. is the way they typically do it. And look what they're bringing out. <laughs> A surprise. Man. Gator crawled the out of the alligator. Chattahoochee River. What? <laughs> it crawled right out of the Chattahoochee River. We don't know this target <laughs> in the ASA world. What? What are we looking at here? Oh, we even have all the scoring rings. Oh yeah. Yeah, we used to shoot this one. Once upon a time. So nobody's gonna know what they're looking at. <laughs> Mike Tyrell is explaining that <laughs> April Fool says Mike Tyrell. <laughs> Going to shoot at the We're Wolverine. actually shooting the Wolverine. <laughs> We're not shooting at the Gator. <laughs> that is not a current ASA tour target. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a big setup for this, and the crowd. I think everybody's just kind of looking around, like, "What?" They're shocked. They're stunned. <laughs> it's like, what? "What?" They're not sure what's happening. Oh uh, yeah. So what Mike Darrell is saying is he did that once before, and a couple of the archers didn't think it was funny, and they were talking about, "I'm going to go call my lawyer." You're putting that out there. And he was like, "Wait, I'm just kidding, guys." <laughs> <laughs> it is April first, right? It is. It is April first, <laughs> and leave it to Mike to to pull some April first shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the last chance archery, last chance arrow is going to be shot at the Wolverine. And so I see Lane Brand up, so they must be doing the tiebreaker later, because it should have been the other guys. There. Austin. Okay. And Justin. Ooh, he shot for 14. He got, I it. got it. Great he shot. Got it. Lane. Great shot. Heck of a show he's put on for his yes. first performance out of here. Yeah. There we go. I, uh, the crowd couldn't see it until he called it, but there awesome you go. Awesome shot. Awesome shot. All right. All right, that moves him to a 516. So now Robert H, Robert Householder, he just needs an eight, which for him is within grasp. <laughs> yeah, definitely within grasp because uh, Robert, uh, two-time no pro sure. shooter of the year. Let's see. He's, he's, he, he's had one eight all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Through uh, 45 targets so far. He's just had one. So my I bet is guess. he's going to get dead center. Yeah, team. that's the safe right in the middle. 
<laughs> yep. Close enough. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. 520. So I don't know if Robert's wife and child are here, but uh, shout out to them. Yeah, there they are. I see them walking in the crowd right. over there. Here, here they come. Go. <laughs> Got the 520 Robert Householder, and they are going to do the shoot off now for third place between Justin Hanna and Austin Taylor. But we want to give Robert Householder his props on a stellar weekend coming away with the big win here in the known pro category. This is a tough one to win. Well, so I saw the ranges. They were long. They were tough. Stout. And yes. he shoots 27 12 rings on the weekend. That's a pile Crazy. of 12 rings. Um, Crazy. Obviously well over half, not quite three-quarter. <laughs> So there we see a dot. We're just hearing in our ears. There's a dot on the center of that lower 12 on the deer. So that's going to be what we judge us off of. Again, Nathan, score doesn't matter, although these guys are going to hit the 12, let's be honest. Well, you never know. Um, this is an interesting format. So I have a history with this. So when I was 16 years old, shooting ASA back in the 90s, I was in the exact same situation for the ASA Classic Championship okay. for first place, and I did not win. Ah. I shot a 10 right over the 12. Charles Custer shot right under the 12 for an 8, but it did oh, not matter. He was closer, right, because score doesn't matter. That's right. And, uh, yeah. yeah, so Charles Custer won that little tournament back a long time ago, but this is Justin Hanna he's for third it. place, shooting his. Uh, I know he's going to smash it. Left again. Oh, left. Wow. Don't know what's going on, but he definitely is shooting yeah. left. Uh, about what I would say about four clicks, maybe yeah, five right. in his sight, something like that. Again, doesn't matter score, uh, but they'll measure that from yeah. the center. Here we go. Got the calipers this time. He's going to get that exactly right. Here we go. We can even see it. Point seven seven eight. There we go. Point seven seven anything eight is the number to be. Anything less than point seven seven eight. All right. You got that one taken care of. All right, here comes Austin Taylor. Now imagine the nerves, uh, Nathan. Well, like you were talking about, your first shoot off there. He's in his first shoot off. He needs this. This is the difference between a podium and not the podium. Well, um, he's young. It's the first time. And a lot of times that means you're not nervous. That's, yeah, I've heard other archers say that. I didn't get nervous until I'd done it several times because <laughs> I didn't realize it was a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> you just shoot your bow. That's right. I just do what I do. <laughs> and then next thing you know, it's like, hey, this is kind of a big deal. <laughs> and then it means more, and then it gets harder. Look at that stabilizer, nice and steady. Oh, yeah. There we go. That one wins. That's going to be it. Austin Taylor. Third place He's going to be our third place finisher. That's going to put Justin Hanna in fourth. Jesse Broadwater takes fifth. Second place to Lane Bryant. There you go. There's official, .525. Uh, and Robert Householder is our champion. And so he's going to come over, and we're going to talk to him because he is the big man here, known pro. Takes that win. And there he is, Robert Holzholder. Householder, flip that microphone down there, Robert. There you got it. Hey, congratulations. How does that feel, Robert Householder, on winning Known Pro, the final shoot down? It feels really good, man. It's uh, it's been a while since I've since I've won. It's been a, about a year and a half, maybe two years at ASA. Uh, last year it was just first man out like three or four times and yeah. it just feels good to be in a shoot down again. Uh, Foley went well and I'm, I'm happy to pull this one out as also. Well, obviously you always shoot extremely well, whether it be 3D, indoors, whatever you're doing, Robert, you're always in the mix. 
Um, to get a win, you know how hard it is. You know how much work and effort has to be put in. And, uh, you know, I'm sure your wife and that little beautiful little girl over there recognize <laughs> it too look at her she's waving she's so cute <laughs> i know we can't see can't see that from the camera but um i know you're just super happy about that and they're happy for you as i am as well great how's that shooting. Thank how's you. that feel having them right here to see that robert it feels really good that they're all here to watch this uh, they support me so much and i couldn't do without them and without the good lord helping me and just uh putting my faith in him and just um just going out there and just doing what i love and i really appreciate everything they do for me Congratulations, Robert. Congratulations, Robert. Yes, Thank Fantastic. You. Thank you all. <laughs> all right, there you have it. We are wrapped up here at the uh, Black Eagle Darton Pro-Am for our competition archery media teams, Stephen Altizer, Nathan Brooks, I'm PJ Riley. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>